Now they show DJ Zinje and the brother, praise the Lord, the brother decided to open a marriage. Is DJ Zinje, the brother, and the children. They are on the side. So I think there's a quote that say the one that chooses to live however they want and the other ones that choose common sense. They say DJ Zinje decided to choose common sense. That is common sense, but it's not so common. That sense. Because they think that they're going to be like that forever. That's the problem. It takes a man to school the sister for the sister to know you're not going to look like this forever. You're getting old. So who tell to see they think they're going to look like the way they look forever. That's a, that's a lie. Give me the book of Proverbs real quick. I'm coming back here. You understand? They think they're going to be hoeing. They're going to be uh, printing around in the bikinis when they are getting green. No, no, no. You understand? Proverbs 31, read verse, verse 30. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Listen good to this. Because right now, again, they post these things on TikToks and whatnot. People, people comment. They comment. Oh, no, no. You, you look good. You look, nah, that's not going to last. Read the Bible. I'm going to show you that. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Read it. It was Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Watch this. Favor is deceitful. That's the comments. That's the YouTube comments, the TikTok comments, the whatever comments. This is it. Favor is de that's deceitful. All the comments they be getting, that's deceit. Right? And beauty is vain. Exactly, because it's not going to be like that forever, man. You, it's only going to be, the beauty will not be vain when you are married. Because in the eyes of your husband, it's, 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 it's only looking good. But in the eyes of them, all, all the men that they, they, they deal with, it's not going to be like that. You understand? Marriage preserves you. We're going to begin that last night, okay? We made it to another Sabbath day. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> all praise is to the Lord. All praise is to the Lord. Let's begin. Today, we're going to deal with the basics, okay? We're going to deal with the basics. Today's topic is called, you need some milk. That's today's topic. You need some milk, okay? That is today's topic. So we're going to be going on some deep basics, okay? Deep basics, because I see brothers and sisters be struggling with the basics, man. So we're going to spend some time on that, okay? Um... Give me the book of John. Give me John 8, verse 32. I want to start there. John 8, 32. Let's begin. Okay, let's go. John 8, 32. Read it. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So that's what we're going to deliver to each and every one of you this day. The truth, as it is written. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to cuddle you with it. But we will teach you the truth as it is written because your soul is on the line. That's why. Read again, verse 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So this is Christ speaking. Who was he speaking to? Jump up to verse 30. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. You see this? Many believed on him. Meaning the things that the Lord taught, the people believed because they applied them. Okay, go ahead. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Stop right there. You see who Christ was teaching to? Christ didn't teach the other nations. He always taught his own people. You understand? Read again. Verse 31. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Read. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. You see that? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Because Christ only taught his own. The same thing that we do today. We only teaching our own. That's the only people that we concerned with. Our own. You understand? Give me that in Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Because he says, then what? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Okay. What is the Jews? What do they look like? Let's see what the Jews look like. Okay. Not those white people in Israel today wearing black. Talk about they're the Jews. You understand? Because of that Edomite forefather of theirs called Eliezer Ben Yahudah. It's them. It's him. 
He's the one that taught them this garbage. Now read them. That they are the Jews when they are not. You understand? That's the house of Satan. Read it. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Read. Judah mourned. Judah mourned. Judah mourned. The Jews are mourning. Because as a people, we are at the bottom of all nations, man. That's why every single day, black men and black women be mourning about something. There's only something to complain about because you are catching hell out here. We are at the bottom, man. The nations are waiting their feet on our behinds. And you will let them if you don't apply this book. If you don't apply God's commandments, you will allow them to do it. Spiritually, they are doing it to you if you don't apply this. Go ahead. Judah morning. Judah morning. The Jews are morning. Come on. And the gates that of language. There is no leaders. The Lord is raising up leaders now. Hold that. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. The Lord is raising up leaders now in his last days. Okay. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9. Read that for me. The verse book of Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9. Read. For I think that God had set us. Has have... set forth us. And set forth us, the apostles, last. You see that in these last days, the Lord says, I'm going to raise up the real leaders in these last days. To hell with political so-called leaders. Those are not the leaders of the people. To hell with the pastors. They don't teach the Bible to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't give a damn about their own people. The only thing they care about is what's in their pocket. That's it. Okay, go ahead. As it was appointed to death. As it was appointed to death. Because some of us, the Lord says, we're going to die doing this work. You understand? You know what you signed up for. Read. For we are made a spectacle unto the world. You see that thing? We are made a spectacle unto the world. Because the world thinks we are a problem. The world thinks the Israelites are a problem. Especially if you're teaching the laws of God. Of course you're going to be a problem. Read. And to angels. And to angels. And to men. And to men. Okay, that's it on that. Go back. Jeremiah 14 and 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Read. Judah morning. Mm -hmm. The gates that of language. When he says the gates that of language, talk about the so-called leaders that our people look up to. That their language because they're not teaching the people the word of God. You understand? But the Lord says, don't worry. I'm going to raise a prophet in the last days. Okay, come on. These, those will be the real leaders now. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. The Jews are black. When he says, then said Jesus to those black people that believed on him. Okay, come on. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Just like how Adam was made, like the dust of the ground. Go ahead. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Exactly. The cry of Jerusalem is gone up. That's why black people are always crying about something. You understand? And the, the problem is that the reason why the majority of our people, they cry and the Lord don't respond unto them because they're not crying to the Lord. They are crying to Julius Malema, Bumsholozi, Jacob Zuma, Fred Shibam. They cry to them. Busil Ramapos. They are not crying to the Lord. That's why the Lord is not going to answer no prayers, man. The Lord is not going to deliver them out of the conditions they are in. The majority of our people, because they don't want to do what this Bible is saying. The reason why our people hate the Bible is because they hate change. That's why. That's why they will listen to an EFF manifesto for four hours. You understand? Because they know that in that manifesto, there is no way where it says don't lie. There is no way that says don't commit adultery. There is no way it says don't steal. There is no way that says don't hate your neighbor. Mm -mm. There is no way that says that. That's why the people will rather sit for four hours listening to an EFF manifesto, an ANC manifesto, because nothing about that manifesto requires the people to change. That's why. So the people will listen to that all day. But as soon as this comes up, that's the problem. Because this Bible forces you to change. The Bible will invade your personal life. And because it's supposed to be. The most you don't belong to yourself, man. You belong to the Lord who made you. Understand that? Okay. So go back. Yes, sir. What verse will we read? John 8, 31, sir. Okay, go back. Read that again. John 8, verse 30, 31. Read it again. John chapter 8, verse 30. Verse 31, 31. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Jesus to those black people which believed on him. You see this? That's how you read it, man. That's how that's why it says precept upon precept. That's how you translate. You, you make it make sense to the people. Go ahead. If ye continue in my word. You see this? This is very important right here. You see this? If you continue. 
You see, the Negroes that are, you see, that I'm gonna, always going to bring that up. You know why? Because the apostles did it. So I'm going to do the same thing. The Negroes and the Negresses that left, you see, the most are not dealing with them. You know why? Because they did not continue in the word of God. They stopped. They took breaks. Who does that? Read that thing again. If you want now, if you continue, if you want, if you continue, if you continue, if you continue, if you continue in my word, go ahead. Then are you my disciples indeed? Because the real disciples they continue. The fake ones, the fake so the the phonies, they don't continue. You understand? They come, they fizzle after a while, they just fizzle out and they leave. Because they're not built for this. You understand? Read on. And ye shall know the truth. And you see, those that continue. Those are the real disciples. And they will hear, they will know the truth. But if you come in and you leave, you don't return, you will never know the truth. I don't care if you can be here for 20 years. The minute you leave this truth, you will never, you, the minute you don't continue, the Lord says, you're not going to know the truth. You're not going to know it. He didn't say enjoy until 20 years. He didn't say enjoy until five. Mm -mm. He says enjoy until the end. Either until you die in this truth or the Lord returns. Then are you my disciple indeed. That's what the Lord is saying. Because we had a brother with us. He had a, a, a necklace. You know behind the necklace, it was written 144,000 seals. You can't make this stuff up. Where he at? <laughs> he laughed. He says, I'm taking a break. But he's 144,000 seals. You cannot make this stuff up, man. <laughs> Read the Bible again for me. Book of John verse 32. Come on. Book of John chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. That means the people that come here and leave, they don't want to be free. They want to remain here in captivity. They want to be slaves. Let me tell you something. Those are the enemies of your people. Those are your enemies and those are God's enemies. Because they're not here for nothing. They just here two minutes, two minutes. And when back in, you know what's in the world? Evil. Evil is in the world. When you go back into the world, you do whatever the hell you want. Don't nobody can tell you nothing. When you are in the world, nobody holds you accountable. You are irresponsible and nobody holds you accountable. You just do whatever you want. And guess what? That's only for a season. It's not going to last. Because guess what? Because remember, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, man. Give me first John 2 15. You know, we always read this, but you know, the most I keep bringing this verse up because there's a problem. First Corinthians, I mean, first John 2 verse 15. First John 2 15. Yeah, read that. The first book of John chapter 2 verse 15. Read. Love not the world. You see, the people that go back into the world because they love it. If they tell you anything different, that's a liar. And that one, you know, when you're going to see them. When the Lord returns, and when they are going to be in that lake of fire, and they will remember you, and you're not going to be able to do nothing to cool their time, nothing. You understand? And there's not no, none of us can do nothing, brothers. I'm going to tell you now. There's nothing you can do because if you tell your parents about this, they reject it. No problem. May the adventure one day the Lord will turn their hearts and they'll come in. But you cannot save them. You can't. You know, all you can do is tell them what this Bible is saying. If they adventure, they get they repent, praise the Lord. If they don't, guess what? <laughs> There's nothing you can do. It is what it is. There's nothing you can do. Go ahead. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Come on. If any man love the world. Because the Lord is telling you why they're going back. Because they love the world. That's why it says, if any man love the world. So he's letting you know why they are in the world. Because they love it. Read. The love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in them. What is the love of the Father? Because the Most High God, he gave us this Bible to protect us from ourselves. That's why we have this Bible. The reason why the Lord gave us the Bible, the laws written in it, is to protect us from ourselves because we are self-destructive. The Bible is to stop that. Is to stop the self-destructive behavior. You understand? Go ahead. For all that is in the world, mm. last of the flesh. Because when you go back into, when you love the world, the world, will, the world says it's okay for you to be gay. 
The world says it's okay for you to be a lesbian. The world says it's okay. The world says it's okay for you to be on OnlyFans. The world says that's okay. Be on OnlyFans. The world says it's okay for you to bleach your skin. The world says it's okay for you as a mother who are very, who are very bikini, like Pell Chusi was doing recently. The thing went viral. The world says that's okay. Because I even seen, I even saw side by side, they saw Pell Chusi, they're showing Pell Chusi, they're showing DJ Zinkley. With he, I think she's married now, right? Is she now married? Yeah, I don't know. You can look it up. She's married now, right? Because I remember the last time the brother wanted to marry her and she was just dragging her feet. On that reality so-called TV show of hers, she's married. They paint the robot. Okay, the sister's married. To hell with the white wedding. Okay. So now they show DJ Zinkler and the brother. Praise the Lord, the brother decided to open a marriage. Is DJ Zinkler, the brother, and the children. They are on the side. So I think there's a code that say the one that chooses to live however they want and the other ones that choose common sense. They say Jesus Hitler decided to choose common sense. That is common sense. But it's not so common. That sense. Because they think that they're going to be like that forever. That's the problem. It takes a man to school the sister for the sister to know you're not going to look like this forever. You're getting old. So who tell to see they think they're going to look like the way they look forever. That's a, that's a lie. Give me the book of Proverbs real quick. I'm coming back here. You understand? They think they're going to be hoeing, they're going to be uh, printing around in the bikinis when they are getting green. No, no, no. You understand? Proverbs 31, read verse, verse 30. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Listen good to this. Because right now, again, they post these things on TikToks and whatnot. People, people comment. They comment. Oh, no, no. You, you look good. You look, nah, that's not going to last. Read the Bible. I'm going to show you that. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Read it. The book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Watch this. Favor is deceitful. That's the comments. That's the YouTube comments, the TikTok comments, the whatever comments. This is it. Favor is de that's deceitful. All the comments they be getting, that's deceit. Read. And beauty is vain. Exactly, because it's not going to be like that forever, man. You, it's only going to be, the beauty will not be vain when you are married, because in the eyes of your husband, it's, 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 it's only looking good. But in the eyes of them, all, all the men that they, they, they deal with, it's not going to be like that. You understand? Marriage preserves you. Look at the, um, what's our sister's name? She married to Courtney B. Vance. Angela Bassett. You ever seen that sister, man? She looks young. She looks younger than Bupel Tooth. You understand? And that sister's been around. She's old. She's the oldest. She's an aged woman. But the way she looks, she looks like she's 21. She's been married for over 20 years, man. That sister. She's been married to that brother, Courtney B. Vance. He's an actor. They are in Holy Eid. We're not talking about Will Smith, Jezebel, and Ahab. We're not talking about that. You understand? But when you look at the sister, you can see what it, she's still pushing. Marriage. You understand? Read that Bible again, verse 30. Good Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Read. Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. Come on. And beauty is vain. And beauty is vain. Because you're not going to look like that forever, man. Read. But a woman that fears the Lord. But the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. You see this? That's why until this day, we still talk about our foremothers, Judith, Sarah, you understand? Shifra, Pua. We still talk about them until this day. You know why? Because they fear the Lord. We still talk about unto this day. We don't talk about King Solomon's riches unto this day. No, we talk about his wisdom unto this day. You understand? But guess what? DJ Zinkler praised the Lord that DJ Zinkler decided to use some common sense. You understand? To do the thing that comes natural. To be married. Okay? Understand that. Now go back to First John 2. Verse 16. Because, I mean, then Tuesday she was married. Ne? I think it was 24 hours. <laughs> That's how long it was. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but oh my God. Robert Marawa was the one. Yeah. I think it was Robert Marawa who decided to marry Peltuzi. I'm sure the friends were like, 
Do you know what you're getting yourself into, man? Are you sure about this? Yeah. Look, he wasn't sure. You see what happened? She no longer married. She's not thinking about her daughter. She's just, it's all about her. She don't think about her daughter. She's thinking about herself. But guess what? The daughter, the daughters, because the reason why I'm bringing Peltusi up is because the young women, young girls, they look up to them. And that's not the people to look up to. That's why I'm using you as an example. I give you a public figure. We're going to use you as an example. What not to follow? I give they put out these channels and what is this? Follow my channel. Mm -mm, unfollow the channel. Those are not the people to follow, man. You follow your foremothers that kept God's commandments that we still talk about them this day. Okay, come on. For all that is in the first book of John chapter 2 verse 16. Read. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. The last of the flesh. Because that's what's in the world. The last of the flesh. Read. And the last of the eyes. And the last of the eyes. Read. And the pride of life. Mm. is not of the Father. You see, these things is like, these are not of the Father. Read. But is of the world. But it is of the world. You see this? It's of the world. And these worldly things, they're passing away. It's only temporary. Go ahead. And the world passes away. Exactly. This world that we're in now, this kingdom that we're in, is passing away. It won't be here forever. That's why it says, thy kingdom come. That's why. Because this world is passing away. It's not talking about the end. Mm -mm. The kingdom that's ruling right now is on its way out. So it is passing away. Esau's kingdom is coming to an end. The Titanic has already hit the iceberg. It's sinking right now. You understand? Right? And the last thereof. And the last that is in this kingdom is also passing. Right? But he that doeth the will of God mm. abides forever. You will live forever. You see this thing? And guess what? You keep God's commandments. This beauty, it will be forever. Because in the kingdom, you live forever. So therefore, the beauty will be forever. You will be young forever. You will be 2,000 years old. It will be like you just came out of your mother's womb. 4,000 years old, you will just be walking around. Imagine. Because our forefathers during the time of Adam, they didn't live up to 2,000 years old. No, it was uh, Methuselah. Let's get that. You understand? Let's get that real quick. Genesis, yeah, chapter 5, verse 26. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter. The book of Genesis chapter 5, verse 26. Read. And Methuselah mm. lived after he had begat Lamech mm. 780 and two years. And begat sons and daughters. And begat sons and daughters. Watch this. And all the days of Methuselah were and, and all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years. Mm. And he died. You see, 969 years old. And this was not forever. 969 years old is not forever. He's still, he was still mortal. You understand that? He was still mortal. So now when the Lord returns, guess what? This is nothing. You live a thousand years, that's nothing. Now, go back, read Genesis 5, 26 and 27 again. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you something here. Yeah, that's it right there. Read it. The book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And Methuselah lived after he, after he began the man 780 and 2 years. So, so after, 780, uh, after 782 years, that's when he had kids. Yeah. Hmm? 782 years, then he had kids after that. Imagine, man. Go ahead. And beget sons and daughters. Mm, that means he had many sons, he had many daughters when he was 782 years old. You understand that? Go ahead. Come on. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. Mm. And he died. Now watch this. Now give me Sirach 18. Start of this one. With Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 1. Read. He that liveth forever. He that liveth forever. Come on. Created all things in Genesis. So, so he that liveth for how long? He that liveth forever. The most high God of he lives forever. He, li he ever liveth. He's always been there. There was not a day where on day one the Lord was born. You will now find that in the Bible, man. 
He when he says when was he? No, he was not. He was just there. Yes, he was. He, he ever lives forever. There's no. Is is there? That's why it's called the ancient of days. You can't count them days. He's been there forever. You understand? Go ahead. The Lord only is righteous, mm. and there is none other but He. Now jump down to verse eight. Listen good. Ecclesiastes chapter eighteen, verse eight. Mm -hmm. What is man, and where to, and where to serve He? Where to serve He? Go ahead. What is His good? Why was He created upon this earth? Go ahead. And what is His evil? What is His evil? Why is dying now? You see. What is this evil? The evil of man is because the proof that man is evil is because man is dying now. Man don't live forever. Go ahead. Not anymore. Read. The number of a man's days at the most a hundred years. You see, it says at the most. Remember, in Genesis is what? 120. The Lord now he dropped it. You see, he dropped it by 20 years again. Uh huh. Go ahead. The number of a man's days are at the most and hundred years. Mm. As a drop of water unto the sea. As a drop of water unto the sea. Go ahead. And a gravel stone in comparison of the sand. Uh -huh. So I so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. That's the part I wanted. So are a thousand years to the days of eternity. So a thousand years is like a drop. It's nothing to the most high, man. A thousand years is nothing to the Lord. He says a thousand years is like a drop to the years of eternity. So 969 years was a drop in the side of the Mosai. 969 years. It was nothing. You understand? So when you say this, you that's when you know this is some heavy stuff, man. This is some heavy stuff right here. So the Lord is letting you know. Even during the time of after Adam and Eve had sinned, listen, we didn't live forever. We live long in our eyes. But in the sight of the Lord, it was less than a day. In the eyes of the Lord, it's nothing. A thousand years to the Most High is one day. A thousand years to us is one day to the Most High. So Methuselah, he didn't, he maybe he lived maybe, you know. 23 hours, <laughs> 22 hours in the side of the Mosai. In the side of the Mosai, Methuselah, 969 years, is not even 24 hours. Because one day is 24 hours, right? In the side of the Mosai, he only lived tw maybe 22, 22 hours. That was it, in the side of the Lord, that 969 years. 22 hours he lived in the side of the Lord. 22, roughly. I'm just wrapping it up, but I'm showing you. So go back to Proverbs 31 to 30 because that's where we were. The that's why it's called the angel of days. You understand? Why do you think our forefathers were so afraid of the Mosai? Because today we're not afraid of the Mosai the way they were. Mm -mm. Our forefathers were afraid of the Mosai because there's things they understood that we don't understand. So, I mean, that, 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 somebody like that, you're supposed to be scared out of shaking out of your boots. That's why Chris warned us, is, listen, you better be afraid of the one that will kill you after death. So, the most, there's no concept of time in the side of the moon. That thing don't exist. It only exists in our realm. You understand? Time is important to us because we don't live forever. But in the, in the realm of the most high, time don't mean nothing to him. Nothing. He exists out of time. That's what you need to understand. So even physics can't even fathom that. The science of the white man is trying to figure that out. Einstein dropped dead trying to figure this out. He died and he dropped dead. Isaac Newton dropped dead trying to figure this stuff out. Because they cannot figure this stuff out. They are meddling with things they're not supposed to be meddling with. Man. Because they are trying to understand our father which is in heaven. The Mosa is complex, man. So they are trying to understand. Listen, yo. Hey, hey, hey. Now I'm going to be going into the. I'm not going there. Today I said we're dealing with the mill. Hey. I just went left here for a second, man. Proverbs 31, verse 30 again. Read that thing again for me. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Read. Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. Come on. And beauty is 
vain. And beauty is vain. Right? But a woman that feareth the Lord. But the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. So, brothers and sisters online, especially you sisters, your role model is not with the Chusibu Kanyimbao. You see Kanyimbao's face now? She looked like somebody, my God. Those of you that have seen it, yo, I couldn't be, I didn't recognize until they just said it. Yo, that's Kanyimbao. I'm like, hey. Eh? Yo, she looks like this old Chinese woman who ate a very bad lobster and she got infected. When you look at her face, man, yo, mm, 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 mm. you see, this is a sickness of our people is sick. You understand? Our people is sick, man. Now, um, yeah, go back to John 8.32. John 8.32. Go back there. Yeah, John 8.32. Book of John chapter 8 verse 32. Right. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. So if you continue in the word of the Lord, you're going to know the truth and the truth will make you free. What is Christ telling you? You continue in this truth. You hold on. You fight. You get your stuff together. Guess what? The Lord says you're going to get salvation. You're going to get delivered when he returns. That's what he's saying right here. So don't worry about the people that leave because Christ never worried about them either. He didn't. Christ only asked the people that will remain. He says, are you going to go too? They said, no, nah, we're not going. We're going to remain. So therefore, the people that left, don't worry about them. He says, I wish such and such was here to hell with them. They were not here in the first place. They were not of us. That's why they left. So don't worry about that stuff, man. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 22 verse 34. Let's start there. Matthew 22 verse 34. The book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 34. Read. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, mm. they were gathered together. Because the, the, the scribes and Pharisees were fond of gathering themselves together against the Lord. Conspiracies. Always having some kind of a conglomerate. A conspiracy, you understand? To overthrow him, to get something out of his mouth. Almost, they were always looking for something, quote unquote, negative, he said. So that they can say, you see, you see, they were always doing that, man. Right? Then one of them, which was a lawyer, mm. asked him a question. Watch this. Tempting. You see this thing? So, so guess what? You see the manner in which the lawyers be asking questions in court and whatnot? They be tempting. They say things, could they ask a question, but it's for an ulterior motive. That's what we're reading here. You understand? That's why most people don't like lawyers, because they are sick as they are, they are deceitful. You understand? Let me come down. They are deceitful. I mean, look at our, our brother, our late brother, uh, um, Senzo, no, that's his name? The case is still going on. How many years has it been now? Is it it's almost 10 years or more than? Uh-huh. Yeah. Go ahead. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, mm. asked him a question, tempting him and saying, What's this? Master, which is great which is the great commandment in the law? So they are asking the question. Because do you see this question? This is a missile. This question, this question, like uh, politicians like to say, this question is pregnant. <laughs> this is a pregnant question. There's more to this than meets the eye. So they are asking, which is the great commandment in the law? So which means, in other words, there's, there's commandments that are important, there's the ones that are not, in other words. The level of questioning implies that there are some commandments which are great, and there are some commandments which are not. And isn't that what's been pushed in the Christian church today? That's exactly right. Because when you teach the people in the Christian church, hey, grow your beard, otherwise you're not going to get the kingdom, they're like, how? I'm not the most I, God is just going to judge me because I don't have a beard. You know why? Because of this question. Which is the great commandment in the law? Which means there are commandments that are more, more important and there are those that are least important. And that's not in the Bible. And guess what? The same, the same question that is being asked is the same spirit that the Christian, the our people that go to the Christian church, that's how they look at this Bible. Because of the question that the pastors are posing unto them. To say, yo, is the, is the Lord, I'm not going to get saved because I don't have fringes. So that's the mindset they have. That's why in their minds, there are commandments that are important to keep. 
There are commandments that are not important to keep in their minds because of these pastors. Okay, go ahead. The book, the book Matthew chapter 22 verse 36. Right. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So now before we get there, give me Matthew 5. Read Matthew 5 verse 17. I just want to give you an example of that. Matthew 5 verse 17. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they make it seem like there are commandments that are important and there are those that are least important. But Christ gave us the answer here. Read that. The book Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Don't think I'm coming to destroy the law or to do away with the commandments. Read. Oh, the prophets. Oh, what's, what, what the prophets have said. When it says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law. He's saying, don't think I'm coming to do away with what Moses taught. That's what he's saying. In the law and the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy. I'm not come to destroy what's written in the law or what the prophets have said. Read. But to fulfill. But to fulfill what's in the law and what's in the prophets. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. For verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. till heaven and earth pass. Because heaven and earth is still here. It has not passed. Read. One jot or one tittle. One jot or one tittle in the law. Go ahead. Shall in no wise pass from the law. You see that shall in no wise pass from the law. Is it don't even remove a comma or a period up in here. Don't remove none of those things because guess what? There's the laws of God are still in full effect. That's really what he's saying. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all the things that are written in the law and written in the prophets are fulfilled. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Stop right there. You see this? So whosoever of the Israelites shall break one of the least commandments. One of the one of what, what the, the what you may think. The, the, the growing of a beard is the least commandment. It is not a least commandment. So the Lord is letting you know, even if you think that's a least commandment, you will not get the kingdom if you break it. I know it's a little white lie. Mm -mm. You're not going to get the kingdom with that. Read. And shall teach men so. And shall what now? And shall teach men so. You teach by example. And shall teach men so to say, this is the least commandment. Don't worry about There's no such thing as a least commandment. Read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning you will not be in the coming kingdom. God, because when he says the least, the Christian church says, yeah, then I'll just be a dumb man. No, 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 I don't mean that. Because the next verse will explain that. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Whosoever shall do the law and do the, and teach the law. Go ahead. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. There's, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But watch this. Go ahead. For I say unto you. Because I say unto you. Come on. That except your righteousness. Except your righteousness. Come on. Shall exceed. Shall what? Shall exceed. Shall what? Shall exceed. Except your righteousness shall exceed. Go ahead. The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. If your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? So why not they just leave it off at verse 19 to say no, you'll just be the least in the kingdom, meaning I'll just be a doorman. I'll just be a cleaner. I'll... No, 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 no. Mm -mm. The Lord is telling you, your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. What was the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Give me Matthew 23 verse 1. I'm going to show you the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Matthew 23. Let's start with this one. We've got Matthew chapter 23 verse 1. Read. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Mm. Come on. Saying, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they sat in Moses' seat. They were teaching the people the laws of God. This is during the time of Rome. You know, they, they were sitting in the seat of judgment. Read. All the all therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. It says, whatsoever they command you according to the law, it says, you must do it. Observe it. But watch this. Go ahead. That observe and do. It says, that must, ob or that you must observe and you must do it. Watch this. Go ahead. But do not ye after their works. It says, but don't do after their works. Why? It's going to tell you. Come on. For they say. Because they teach. And do not. But they don't apply what they teach. So what is that called? Hypocrisy. So guess what? You say you are the least. If you are the least, you say no. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a cleaner. I'm gonna just keep the door. 
you will not, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom. The Lord is letting you know. But the Christian church is deceiving our people to think, no, 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 I'll just be in the door. I don't need to enter in. No, you will not be in the kingdom. That means you won't be dead. But your worm will be up in that lake of fire, burning forever. I say something there. Now go back. Matthew 5. Verse 20 again. We've got Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Read. For I say unto you, mm -hmm. that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, Read. ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see this? That's it. So the Lord is letting you know there's no such thing as a least commandment. There's no such thing. Give me, I'll give an example. Because when we teach on the steel, we talk about the beard, they're like, nah, but the beard, I will not get delivered. Yes, you will not get delivered. Second Samuel chapter 10. Watch this. Start with one. We're gonna jump down. So, the second book of Samuel, chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died. Mm. And Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Go ahead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun, mm. the son of Nahash. Go ahead. As his father showed kindness unto me. You see, King David was a businessman, man. King David understood how to deal with the heathens. That means King David had a good report even among the heathens. You understand? That's why when King Solomon took the throne, he used all the relationships that King David had before him. He knew who to use, where to get the best what to build the temple. You understand? Go ahead. David sent to comfort him mm. by the hand of his servants for his father. Read. And David's servants came in, came into the land of the children of Ammon. Read. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun their Lord, mm. Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? You see, you see what they're doing? They are planting evil in him now. They don't know the relationship. That means though, when King David had a good relationship with Hanun's father, they didn't like it. Now that Hanun's father is gone, now they are poisoning the son. Isn't that the same thing that happened to Jehoash? Jehoash. Read that. Second Chronicles 24 and 1. You know, something is coming to my mind, so I, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, read that. We're coming back to Second, second Samuel. 24 and 1. This is book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 1. Listen good to this. Joash was 70 years old when he began to reign. Yeah. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Mm. His mother's name also was, was Ziba of Beersheba. Zibir. Was Zibir of Beersheba. Go ahead. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. On the days of Jehoiada the priest. You see this? So Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. As long as Jehoiada the priest was still alive. Because Jehoiada the priest was what Johanna the priest was was a, was an elder so Joash the only reason why Joash was in the right movement he was moving correctly was because of Johanna the priest as soon as Johanna the priest died guess what evil started to happen he started to listen to the people that did not like Johanna the priest when he was still alive because he put negroes in check <coughs> you understand go ahead and Johanna took him two wives and, and he begat sons and daughters. Mm. And it came to pass after this that jo Joash was that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out into the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that ye hasten the matter. How be it? The Levites hasted it not. They did not see the agency of the situation. Jump down to verse 17 now. Listen good to this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah. That's it. Came the princes of Judah. Now Jehoiada the priest is gone. Now, now comes the princes of Judah now. Go ahead. And made obeisance to the king. You see, they made obeisance. They bowed down before him. Go ahead. Then the king hearkened unto them. Mm. And they left the house of the Lord God, and they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. Exactly. You see what they did? As soon as Jehoiada the priest died, look what they did. They started to, to worship idols. They started to worship other gods. They're no longer following the, the Lord God of their fathers anymore. So who made sure that Joash 
was a righteous king, Jehoiada the priest. Because Jehoiada the priest and the spirit of the Lord God upon him. You understand? Go ahead. And map came upon Judah and Jerusalem. Mm. For this their trespass. You think? Go ahead. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them. But they would not give ear. You see what they did? The Lord says, okay, you're going off. I'm going to send you prophets to come and fix this thing. They said no. They did not want to listen. They continued in their eve. That's what we read here. Okay. So as soon as he was gone, you see what they was doing? Now go back. Second Samuel 10. Read verse uh, 2 again. Second book Samuel chapter 10 verse 2. Mm. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, mm. as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servant for his father. Go ahead. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun their Lord, mm. Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? You see that? Do you think David is honoring your father? You see what they're doing? Because Hanun's father is no longer. Now Hanun is there. The men now, they are poisoning him against our father for the king David. Read. That he had sent comforters unto thee, had not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? You see what they are saying? They are saying, no, David is not coming to, to, to support you. No, he's coming to spy out the land that he may overthrow it. Now they are bearing false witness against our, our forefather, King David. Go ahead. Wherefore, Hanun took David's servants mm. and shaved off the, half, the, the one half of their beard. You see what Hanun did? Now Hanun shaves off the half of their beards now. Go ahead. And cut off their garments in the middle, mm. even to their buttocks. You see what he did? Now he's humiliating them. He's shaving off their beard. You understand? And he's also making it look as if they sick in their pants. And that's the same thing today. Isn't that what black men be doing? Black men shave off their, their beards and they sick their pants. So basically, now he's a baby. You understand? Yeah, he's a baby. He's just an overgrown baby. That's why they take their pants, they clean shave. Go ahead. And sent them away. Mm. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them. So David, when he heard of this thing, he said, okay, let me meet my men and see what's going on. Go ahead. Because the men were greatly ashamed. You see our forefathers back then? He's showing you even the stature and the character of our forefathers compared to then and now is different. Today, black men have no shame when they don't have a beard. They don't have no shame when they take their pants. But our forefathers back then, they had shame when their beards were shaved and their pants were sagging when they were showing off their buttocks. Because it's a shame. Read. The king said, Terry at Jericho. He says, wait at Jericho. Because David was at Jerusalem. He says, wait at Jericho. Go ahead. Until your beards be grown. Until your beard is fully grown. Go ahead. Then return. And then return to the kingdom. Return to the headquarters. You can't return. Mean you will not enter into the kingdom. <coughs> so now you will not get the kingdom of heaven on earth if you don't have a beard. If you grow one, you shave it, you will not get the kingdom. That's what the Lord is saying. But the Christian church will tell you, mm -mm, that's the least commandment. You see the difference here? Yeah. Now, I just wanted to show you that how loaded the question was. The question was pregnant. You understand? So now go back to Matthew 22. Because I know some of you already forgotten when we went to those places in the first place. Matthew 22. Read verse 34. One more again. Let's start again. Matthew chapter 22 verse 34. Read. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, mm -hmm. they were gathered together. They were gathered together. Come on. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, mm. asked him a question. Tempting him Read. and saying, Read. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great commandment in the law? All of them. There is no least commandment, there is no greater commandment. They are all of them, are, all the commandments, they are great. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God. With Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Then said Jesus unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mm. 
and with all their soul, right? with all their mind. So you see, he didn't even get it. He didn't even immediately answer that question. You see how he answered it? He says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. He's taking them back to the beginning now. Okay, go ahead. This is the first and great commandment. He says, this is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord your God. Go ahead. And the second is like unto it. You see this thing? That means that the, the, when loving the Lord your God is not greater than loving your neighbor as yourself. It's all the same. You understand? Read. Right? And the second is like unto it. No, 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 no. The second is lower than it. And the second is like unto it. It's exactly the same. Read. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So it says, this second commandment is just as great as the first. Read. On these two commandments. On these two commandments. Can all the law. Was written in the law that he says he's not come to destroy. Remember we read in Matthew 5, 17, it says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. So it says, because if he came to destroy the law, why would he say this? Think about it now. If Christ came to destroy the commandments, the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, why would he come? And remember, it's in the same book, by the way. Read Matthew 5, 17. Matthew 5, 17. Book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Is it, this is Christ speaking. He says, think not that I am come to destroy the law. Read. Oh, the prophets. Oh, what's written in the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy. A repeat. He's repeating it. I am not come to destroy. But to fulfill. But to fulfill. Now, how many chapters later? Read that. Matthew 22. Book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 40. Mm. On these two commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the law, hang all the law and the prophets. So if the law was destroyed, why would he say this? And this is in the same book. He's letting you know. You see the so-called Christians, our people in the kitchen, they don't read this Bible. Because they don't have the sense to pick up to say, but wait a minute. Christ just said, I'm not come to destroy the law. Then he also says, on these two commandments and all the law and the prophets. So how could he have destroyed the law? It doesn't make any sense. You understand? Now, read verse 37 one more again. Book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 37. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Read. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Come on. And with all thy mind. And with all thy mind. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 20, verse 1. Exodus. We're going to go over, love the Lord your God with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Exodus 20. Start with verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 1. Read. And God spake all these words, saying, mm. I am the Lord thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm. out of the house of bondage. So we, this is one thing that we must always remember. We always use this to understand, to know what does it mean, Egypt, what does Egypt mean. But it's more than that. You understand? Read again, I'm going to show you that. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 1. Read. God spake all these words saying, mm. I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God, come on. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Come on. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Now watch this. So we read this to explain Egypt means the house of bondage, the house of slavery. Which is correct. Okay. But there's more to this. Give me that in first, second Exodus 1. Second Exodus chapter 1. Verse 15. Start with 13. We're going to read down. 2nd Exodus 1 verse 13. Listen good to this. The 2nd book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 13. Come on. I led you through the sea. Mm. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Go ahead. I gave you Moses for a leader. Mm. And Aaron for a priest. And Aaron for a prophet. Go ahead. I gave you light in the pillar of fire. He says that if this is the pillar of fire by night. A pillar of clay of, of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Go ahead. I gave you light in the pillar of fire mm. and great wonders have I done among you. 
Yet we have forgotten, said the Lord. Read that again, verse 15. The second verse you were. Verse 14, sir. Okay, read it. The second book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 14. I gave you light in the pillar of fire. Go ahead. And great wonders have I done among you. Come on. Yet ye have forgotten me, said the Lord. Yet have ye forgotten me, said the Lord. Come on. Yet have ye forgotten me, said the Lord. So the Lord says we've forgotten him. Okay. Because when once you forget who you are, you will forget who the Lord is. Our knowledge of self connects us to the most high God of heaven and earth. Our lack of knowledge of self disconnects us from the most high God of heaven and earth. That's why you see Wukanimbao, they do what they do to themselves. They bleach their skin, they change their faces. You understand? Because what? Lack of knowledge of self. Read. Thus said the Almighty, thus said the Almighty Lord, the quails were the token for you. I gave you tents for your safeguard. Mm. Nevertheless, he murmured there. He says, nevertheless, you complained there. The spirit of murmuring and complaining. That's Israel for you. You see, the 12 tribes of Israel, if you want to know that you're dealing with the 12 tribes of Israel, just examine the spirit of murmuring, you'll find it. That's when you know. That's one of the signs. He says, these cases shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Just investigate that brother be murmuring, that sister be complaining, that's Israel. That's a Jew. Go ahead. And triumph not in my name mm. for the destruction of your enemies. What's this? But ever to this day do ye yet murmur. To the 2024, and to you see the Bible is timeless, man. The scriptures are timeless. That's why it says, and to this very day, you still complain. The, listen, the most that God is talking to he, that's how you know you are a Jew. If you ever doubted yourself, you find yourself be complaining, that's how you know. <laughs> the complaint is a sign and a wonder. It will tell you, oh, I'm a Jew right there. You see, I can't stop complaining. The Jew, Israelite, the sons and daughters of Abraham. You understand? <laughs> Go ahead. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? That's why the Lord says, that's why we read in Exodus 20. Read Exodus 20 verse 2 again. Book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. What's this? I am the Lord thy God, mm. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm. out of the house of bondage. The most high God is reminding us what he did for us. That's why he's asking the question. Read that again verse 17. Second Exodus. The second book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 17. Ray. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Exactly. That's why the Lord keeps reminding us. Listen, I've done this for you. Where's the benefits of my, where's the fruits of my labor? Hmm? I've done this for you, but yet you still complain. Do you understand that if it's not been the Lord, you know these nations would have already made at all of us. Eh? The only reason why we are alive is because of the mercy of the Lord upon us. And because of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. You understand that, right? Go ahead. When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, mm. did you not cry unto me? Go ahead. Saying, Why hast thou brought us up? Why hast thou brought us us in? I'll call it, sir. It's going to be Exodus chapter 1, verse 18. Read. Saying, Why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? You see what the question was? You see, we as a people were ungrateful, man. The reason why, let me tell you something. The reason why you find your, you see yourself always complaining. You know what? I'm going to show you why you always complain. Give me the book of Timothy, man. I'm going to show you. We are dealing with the basics, man. Deep basics. Uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Verse 1 and 2. The second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. What's this? This know also mm. that in the last days... We are in the last days right now. You see, last week, we went over a class. Some of you, I know, you missed the last part of that class. You didn't understand what was coming out. You didn't catch it. We're in the final hour. That final hour started when Christ taught, when Christ's ministry began. That's when it's the TikTok. Go ahead. This, this know also mm. that in the last days. That in the last days. Because remember, you ever hear our grandmothers and grandfathers be talking about the last days? You're like, but when is this day coming? We are in the last day. We've been in the last days, by the way. 
In case of you, some of you have not noticed it. You see how, how fast time is moving? To, listen. Sunday over is already Friday. You see how quickly the week are moving? It's not just me. Even the people in the world, they can see it. So in the world, in the truth, you should know better. Because you say, yo, maybe it was just Monday. It's Thursday already. It's moving quick. Some of you are sleeping to that. You don't really see how quickly time is moving. The Lord is moving. The time is moving faster and faster because why? The Lord is about to return. Some of you still play. The hour is finishing. We are, we are almost at close of day, close of business. Remember when he was hiring? Yeah, close of business is about to happen. When the Lord is going to give everybody the pain. Start with the, with, start with the last first. <laughs> Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You see, this is the problem. Because in the last days, the Lord says men will be lovers of their own selves. They're not going to be loving the Lord. Mm -mm. Everything they do will be for their own glory. Not the most high. Go ahead. Covetous. Mm -hmm. Boasters. Boasters. Proud. Proud. Blasphemers. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Disobedience to parents. Unthankful. This is the part I wanted to get to. Unthankful. The reason why you find yourself murmuring and complaining is because you are ungrateful. Yeah. You are ungrateful. That's why you find yourself complaining every single day is because you are ungrateful. Excuse me. You are unthankful. Because if you wake up in the morning, send up the prayers, study, send up the prayers, give thanks and praise to the Most High God for the fact that you're still alive, you, you still remember who you are, that you are a Jew, you're not lost in the source like the rest of our brothers who we want to come into this truth, praise the Lord for that. But... The reason why you find yourself always complaining is because you are ungrateful. You have the spirit or you have a sense of entitlement now. That's why you don't give thanks for nothing. That's why the Lord says, unthankful. Go ahead. Unholy. Unholy. Read. Without natural affection. Because a natural affection, natural affection is the laws of God. Unnatural affection is the breaking of God's commandments. That's unnatural affection because you will abuse yourself. I'll give an example. You'll abuse yourself with food. You'll abuse yourself with alcohol. You'll abuse yourself with gossip. You'll abuse yourself with murmuring and complaining. You'll abuse yourself with any manner of whatever you can get your hands on. You'll abuse yourself with it. That's exactly what you're going to do. Anything that you're going to find, you're not going to use it according to as it is. You'll abuse yourself with it. You get a job, you'll abuse the job. You'll go to work late. You'll leave early. You'll not do the job properly. You'll have zero work ethic. You'll have no, have no commitment. Don't nobody can rely on you. Because why? I'm thankful. You, you understand that? That's what the most like, that's why it says unthankful. And this is what's going to happen in the last days. That's what the, the, the apostle Paul is explaining this to Timothy, man. He is explaining it to us. That's what he's explaining. You'll get married. You'll just be a sloth. You're not going to reverence your husband. You'll be shiftless. You're not going to give your husband the bonds. Yeah, you'll, you guess what? You'll deprive your husband of the bonds. You damn devil, you. You will do that, man. You will put your husband on a schedule. You can't believe it. Just yesterday, we were dealing with the same topic. You cannot make this stuff up, man. The council came out. It must be as though it, the wall is covered by it. That's how it must be available on demand. Good, basically, you must be like Fleece Johnson. You understand? You must be like Fleece Johnson. Your wife, that's how your wife must be like. They're like, that's Fleece Johnson. That's my Fleece Johnson. For me. <laughs> you understand? So, so, but the point is, you know, these type of, that's, that, that's, that's 
that's what it means, I'm thankful. You see, a lot of you sisters, you want to be married, but you don't want to be married. You are married, but you don't want to be married. You don't want to stay married. Guess what? I'm thankful. Because if your husband didn't pick you, who was going to pick you? And if they did, would they marry you? You see, that's the question you must ask yourself. Would they put, would they put their name on you? That is the question. Brothers, you are up in here, you get married, but you don't leave the house. I'm thankful. You are more wandering up and down morning, you understand? Now the Lord said, okay, I'm going to move the spirit in the, in the congregation to the leadership. You're going to get married now. Now you married, you just sit now. Now you say you, in the world they say you let yourself go. You just let yourself go. You don't want to glorify the most high God in your body and in your spirit. You don't want to do it. You don't study. You don't see cancer. You don't want to grow in the congregation. Why? I'm thankful. You are up in here. You're not married. You are a soldier. You are a brother. You don't study. You don't see cancer. You don't follow command. I'm thankful. You understand that? So these are the things that you're going to see in the last days. You'll have a lot of slothful behavior going on. That's what the Lord is telling you. Because that's what's going on in Babylon. Slothfulness. Because there's a lot of idleness going on. You'll have young men lasting over sisters online. Watching TikTok videos of sisters be twerking. You've got to have a young sister's body physically boyfriend. Talk twerking. But hmm? about sisters who are 16 now. Hmm? Show me your picture. That, these are the garbage you're going to see. You understand? You experiment, I want to kiss a boy. What the hell is wrong with you? I hope after you kiss that boy, you drop dead. You die in your sin, and we're not going to come to your funeral. Mm -mm. We want to say good riddance. She gone now. Because when we say this, it's like, no, they are being harsh. No, we are being honest with you. Because when you do all those things, you're going against what this Bible is saying. So therefore, you drop dead and die. That's it. You understand? Now, what verse we have? Yeah, that's what I wanted. Go back, man. I just wanted to give an example what the Lord was saying. Second Genesis 1. Read verse 17 one more again. The second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 17. Read. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? The, the Lord is asking the question. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Go ahead. When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, mm. did you not cry to me? Did you not cry? You know what the crazy part about this is? When you do evil, the Lord judge you. When, when, when you start to find yourself into trouble, guess who the first person you remember? The most High God. Now all of a sudden you're going to look for the Bible. You ever seen our people in the world? Yo, as soon as we have a problem, now they, you know, I need to go to church. And, but the whole time you were just ignoring the prophets at the street corners telling you, repent, get off the pants, put on a dress. He said, nah, I'm not doing that. Go ahead. Saying, why has thou brought us, why has thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? Mm. It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians. Exactly. And that's the same mindset today. The same mindset is, you know, it was better if I didn't know that I was a Jew, because therefore I'll just, be, I'll just be sibling for the white man. You understand? You'll be okay with that. Go ahead. Than to die in this wilderness. Than to die in this wilderness. So now, we, go, we cry, because remember, we cry to the Lord. The Lord heard our cry. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to send you Moses and Aaron to come and deliver you with the angels. Then when we get delivered, the adrenaline is gone. Now we're settling, we're relaxing. Now we begin to mama and complain. You see what's going on? That is, that's our people for you. Okay? So that's what the Lord is trying to show us, man. Mammering and complaining. Okay? So go back to Exodus. Exodus 20. Read verse 2. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord your God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Mm. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Go ahead. 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read that. This is the first commandment now. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And guess what? You know, our people know this verse. But they say to hell with it because they like Caesar Borges. They like Buddha. I see black people now, they say they are Buddhists. Hmm? They be wearing those Chinese nonsense, looking like, I don't know, all grannies. But they know this verse, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because, what was his name? Tyrese. Ne? He went to Club Shay Shay. Is it Shannon Sharp? The guy who's having that show called uh, Club Shay Shay, where he's inviting celebrities to come and talk. He was wearing a dress. A long black dress. And nobody was talking about that. Everybody was talking how funny he is because I was reading the comments. They keep mentioning, no, he's so funny and all that. Their, their dress is in your face. But you're not talking about the dress. You understand? I remember brothers that I used to be with when they first at the beginning of this, at the camp, when they were a flaming homosexuality in the front of us who look who busy popping calm. You understand? Mutu busy bringing Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. I'm like, Deuteronomy 28 and the slave ships, there's a homosexuality in front of you. Bring up the miracles, man. What the hell is going on? You understand? You can't be bringing Deuteronomy 28 and the slave ship and here's a homosexual in front of you. busy. Popping calm. You bringing Deuteronomy 28 and the slave ships. Because he was afraid. Me, I'm like, I snatch your mic. I'm like, give me the mic, man. Let me deal with this. Read the scripture again, man. Let's <laughs> read again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 96. Psalms 96, verse 4. Listen good to this. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm going to show you something with this, right? So, so I'm going to show you what King David was going over here. Psalms 94 verse 6 and Psalm 96 verse 4. Because Psalms chapter 96 verse 4. Read. For the Lord is great. Because the Lord is great. Come on. And greatly to be praised. And greatly to be praised. Come on. He is to be feared above all gods. He is to be feared above all gods. So when the Lord says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, is because the Lord is great and is greatly to be and is to be feared above all gods. Go ahead. For all the gods of the nations. This is now going into idolatry. For all the gods of the nations are what? Are idols. They are idols. Because the gods of the other nations, the heathens, the heathens worship idols. That's why the Lord is saying what he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You know what the Lord is saying? Don't follow the other nations. Basically, in simple terms, that's what the Lord is saying. The Lord says, do not follow the other nations. That's really what he's saying in simple terms. Read again. Verse 5. For Psalms chapter 96 verse 5. Read. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Because all the gods that the word for me is because. All the gods of the nations are idols. Read. But the Lord made the heavens. The Lord, but the most are God of heaven and earth. He made the heavens. Buddha didn't make the heavens. Krishna didn't make the heavens. Caesar Borges, that white image of Jesus, did not make the heavens. Krishna did not make the heavens, man. None of these idols that these nations are worshipping made the heavens. They did not because we serve a living God. You understand? That's what we need to understand. Now watch this. Now, let's go back to where we were. Psalms 96 verse 10. Read that for me. The book of Psalms chapter 96 verse 10. Read. Say among the heathen. Say among the heathen. That the Lord reigneth. This is what the Lord says we must say. Among the, because where we are? We are scattered among the heathens. You understand? And, and among these heathens, we have, learning, we have learned their works. Now the Lord is bringing us out of the heathens spiritually. Okay. Verse 10 again. 
The book of Psalm chapter 96 verse 10. Rain. Say among the heathen. Uh -huh. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. And when we say, when we teach our people, the heathen will know that the children of Israel are coming back. Because we're going to teach about the one true God of heaven and earth. We're not going to teach about Krishna. We're not going to teach about Buddha or Allah, that black rock in Mecca. We're not going to teach about that. Right? The world also shall be established. Mm. That it shall not be moved. It shall not be moved. Come on. He shall judge the people righteously. The Lord will judge the people righteously. You see this? So we must proclaim the Lord among the heathens. The heathens will know that the children of Israel are back. Because when we teach our people, the heathens are watching too. When we go to the streets, the heathens are there too, listening. They're taking videos of us. I remember, we were teaching, I think, when Thessalonica men, the mili guess what? The intelligence, they sent a military general to come there and spy on us. He came wearing the, the stuff. He came there and then just stood there. He watched us. And he stood in front of us. This tall, you know, like, well, Monoli is not a small boy in the military. Intelligence, big guy. He came to a mono, colonel, something, or colonel. Somewhere, somewhere there. He come there, he look at the pictures. He look at the, the pictures that we're teaching, our teaching aids. He's looking at them. He's, he didn't say nothing to us. He just stood there and watched. Look at every teaching aid that we put down. And then after that, he left. He said nothing. We asked him a question. He didn't say nothing to us. You understand? He left. And then the following week, there was this evil man that came sitting in a corner just taking pictures secretly. Secretly. And we would see him every Sabbath towards the end of day when we were teaching. He's sitting there in a corner on top of a car. He's busy shooting, taking pictures. He never came closer to us. Never. No, he's always sitting. And we saw him. Because when we teach the truth, the real truth according to the scriptures, you are a threat. Understand that. Okay. Now, read the scripture again. The book of Psalms, chapter 96, verse 10. Read. Say among the heathen, mm. that the Lord reigneth. The world also is a, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. He shall judge the people righteously. Okay, now watch this. Give me Psalm 36, verse 10. Because the reason why the Lord says thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because the Lord knows that the nations are going to exalt themselves against what is written in this book. And they're going to make themselves to appear to be gods on this earth. And they are not. Now watch this. Surah 36 verse 10. Listen good to this. We go to Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 10. Read. Smite in asunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen. Mm. The heads of the rulers of the heathens is the is Esau, Erom, Idumia, the white man. He's the head of the, all these heathens. Go ahead. That say, mm. there is none other but we. You see what the heathens, you see what Esau says? Esau says, there's none other but him. That's why the Lord says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read again, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 10. Read. Smile in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathens. Mm. That say, there is none other but we. There is none other but we. Because that's what they say. They say there's none other God but them. So that's why the Lord is letting us know. He says what? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because the heads of the rulers of the heathen will say there's none other but them. You understand that, right? I'm going to give an example of that. Give me Exodus 5, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to give an example of the rulers of the heathens during his time. Exodus 5 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. Read. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Watch this. Let my people go, that they may, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Read. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Do you see this thing? So he didn't acknowledge the God of Israel. He said, Who is the Lord? Because he's also letting you know, if the Lord God of heaven and earth was their God, he wouldn't ask this question. Because Pharaoh and them, they had many, many idols that they worship in Egypt, which is why the Lord destroyed their idols during the Exodus. Now read the Bible for me. The book of Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. Watch this. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, 
Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Thus said the Lord God of Israel. Come on. Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Read. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? You see what he's asking? Look at the level of arrogance. Who is the Lord? Who is this God that you speak of? Read. That I should obey his voice and let Israel go. You see what he's saying? That I should obey because this is how all, this is the heathens, this is how they think. I need you men and women to understand that all the heathens upon this earth, doesn't matter, Edomites, Egyptians, Hamites and whatnot, this is all. Of, this is how all of them think. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Meaning one, who is the Lord that I should obey his laws? Meaning they don't want to hear the voice of the most High God of heaven and earth. And guess what? These heathens now have defiled our people to think the same way. You understand? Give me that in Deuteronomy 27 and 10. Then when the Lord says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, he says, Don't follow the other nations. That's really what he's saying. Okay, come on. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10. Listen good to this. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Come on. And do his commandments. And do his commandments. And his statutes, mm. which I command thee this day. You see this? You see what the voice of the Lord thy your God is? His commandments. So what was Pharaoh saying? Go back to Exodus 5, verse 2 now. The book of Exodus chapter 5, verse 2. Read. And Pharaoh said, mm. Who is the Lord mm. that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? You see that? Who is the Lord that I should keep his commandments and let Israel go? That's what he's saying. So the heathens, this is all the heathens, this is their mindset. That's why all the heathens have idols they worship, they bow down to. That's why the Lord says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Why? Because the gods of the nations are idols. So the Lord is letting us know that when you don't obey the voice of the Lord your God, you don't bow down to the God of this Bible, you're worshiping the gods of the other nations. So therefore, you are following the other nations. Therefore, you are doing what our forefather Adam did. You know what our forefather Adam did? He was hiding among the nations. That's why they asked the Lord, I'm not going to go there, it's some deep stuff. But that's what Adam was doing. Adam was hiding among the nations. He was hiding among the trees. That's the same thing that we are doing today as a nation. You understand? Go ahead. I know not the Lord. You see what he's saying? I know not the Lord. How do we know the Lord? Give me that in 1 John 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 4. Start up with 3. Pharaoh said, I know not the Lord. 1 John chapter 2. Read verse 3. The first book of John chapter 2 verse 3. Come on. And hereby we do know that we know him. Mm. If we keep his commandments. That's it. So if you say you know the Lord, it means you are keeping his commandment. Because the only way to know him is by you doing what he commanded you to do. You understand? So when Pharaoh says, I know not the Lord, meaning listen. I don't keep no commandments. I do what I want. And the heathens, this is all their mindset. That's why on the Sabbath, you see what they're doing? Their shops are open. There's chisanyama everywhere. They are buying and selling. There's soccer going on. There's Formula One racing going on. You know what? Because they know not the Lord. Why should they listen to the voice of the Lord, our God? He's our God and not theirs. That's why they don't obey him. And guess what? Now they've taught us not to be, obey him either because they know when they don't obey him, you see, the heathens know their fate. The only people that don't know their fate is our people as a nation. They don't know what's going to happen to them in the last days. When it's all said and done, they don't know what's going to happen. You understand? Because I was talking to one sister, the sisters that were supposed to come and join us, They've been dragging their feet. So one time I saw them at Bowlers. I talked to them. I'm like, yo, you've been saying you're coming. Why are you dragging you? You're not doing this for me, by the way. <laughs> you're doing this for yourselves when you come into land. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself and the most High God of heaven and hell. One sister wears pants. She was like, the other one is married. The other one wears pants. Then the, I showed them Isaiah 316 and verse 24. You told me 22 verse 5. And then I'm like, the reason why your hair don't grow that's why you put in fake hair is because you want to look like a man. That's why you dress like one. So the Lord is judging you. You know the question she asks is like, but why is the white woman wears pants and her hair is beautiful? 
I'm like, because the Lord didn't give the white woman the laws he gave to you. That's why the Lord is punishing you and you own. Until you learn that, you're going to continue to do what you're doing and find out. You understand? So, but that's the mindset. Because they, our people have aligned themselves with the nation so much so that they are saying, but why are they fine and we not? But when you are given the answers, you reject the answers because the answers requires you to change. And they don't want that. Because it always comes down to that. Change. Okay? So go back. So I just wanted to give you an example with Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh, that's what he said. He says, who is this? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? Guess what? The white man is saying that that's the same mindset he's got. The nations, that's how they think. They don't care about this Bible. So you see in the Christian church, you see, see Jehovah's Witnesses, because it's the same Christian church, it's still the same. Jehovah's Witnesses and the Christian church is not, the two, not two different things, it's the same. It's the exact same thing. You understand? But in those churches, they've created a rainbow nation of Nelson Mandela in the churches. Because they want, they want to what? They want to appease their oppressors so their oppressors will love them. And their oppressors know who they are. And their oppressors, not only that, but the oppressors know themselves. They know they're the devil. They know that you are a Jew, but they're going to keep you in la-la land. You say, no, we are all one. The, the blood in our, in our vein is the red. No, it's not the same. Our blood is different from theirs, man. Ours is sanctified, theirs is not. They were born to be the devil who were born to be the kings of this earth. So they are not the same. Oil and water. We will never mix. Never. So right now in the Christian church with our people of the rainbow nation, you see the, the government of national unity. It's all fairy tales, those things. Those are all fairies. It's fairies, lollipops, and gumdrops. That's what that is. Because when you mix oil and water, you do this a little bit, it seems like it's mixing. So, right now, when it seems like it's mixing, that's where everybody is. The government of national unity, feminism, democracy, that's where everybody else is. But you know, as soon as everybody goes back to your, their homes, that's when oil and water separates. Because then reality kicks in. Oh, whoa. You see, I'm going to the cases, look where they go. I'm begging for jobs, look, they own. They own businesses. That's how it is. But our people want to deal with that delusion of inclusion. That's what it's called. The delusion of inclusion. Now go back to Exodus 20 verse 3 again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Right. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You know why the Lord is saying this? Give me Psalms 95 now. Psalms 95. Read verse 3. Psalms 95 verse 3. So the Most High God is, is basically warning us that do not follow these other nations. Because there are, these nations will define you. It's not if or maybe, they are going to define you. Understand that. Psalms 95 verse 3. Read what you got. We've got Psalms chapter 95 verse 3. Read. For the, Lord is, for the Lord is a great God. For the Lord is a great God. Come on. And, and a great king above all gods. And a great king above all gods. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Exactly. That's why it says you shall have no other gods before him. He's telling you what you must do. Read the thing again. Verse 6. The book of Psalms chapter 95 verse 6. Read. Oh, come. Mm. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Let us kneel before our Lord, the Lord our maker. You see who we bow down to? The Lord our maker. Read. For he is our God. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. We are the people of his pasture. Come on. And the sheep of his hand. Mm. Today, if ye will hear his voice. And he says, today, if ye will, if ye, you Israelites, will hear his voice. Go back to Deuteronomy 27 and 10. Because our people don't want to hear the voice of the Lord, man. They want to hear the voice of the pastor. Not the voice of the Lord. Okay. Deuteronomy 27 and 10. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10. Ray. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. And do his commandments. And what? 
and do his commandments. Because that's the voice of the Lord your God. Read. And his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day. Which I command thee this day. You know when he says which I command thee this day is which I command you today. When he says this day means today. Guess what? The um, forefather King David, he just said the same thing. Go back then. Verse 7. Psalms 95. Well, Psalm chapter 95 verse 7. Listen good. For he is our God. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. Come on. And the sheep of his hand. Watch this. Today. To what? Today. This day. This day. Come on. If you will hear his voice. Exactly. That's the same thing we just read. If you will hear his voice. Is it because we are the sheep of his pasture? So when the Christian church, they read this, they say, but it doesn't say Israel here. Give me that in Matthew 15. Verse 24. Because it says, and the sheep of his hand. What is that? We are the sheep of his hand. Read it. With Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Listen good to this. But he answered and said, mm. I am not sent. I am not sent. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the sheep of his head is the sheep of his pasture, which is the house of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? When you don't read the Bible precept upon precept and you don't keep God's commandments first and foremost, a Christian will confound you. He, they will definitely call because they will read the book of Psalms. The first question you ask them, who wrote the book of Psalms? King David. Who was King David? The king of Israel. Okay. Give me the book of uh, Proverbs 1 and 1. Hello? Listen, that's what I'm saying. You, the Christian, we can, if you get confused by a Christian, oh my God, shame on you. Because they'll just pull something out of the book of the Psalms and you just get lost. Because you are not you are not comprehending the guideline. You're not listening, you're not understanding what's coming out here. You'll just get lost. Okay, go back to Psalms 95. Read verse 10 now. Go Psalm chapter 95, verse 10. Read. For two years long was I grieved with this generation mm. and said, It is a people that do err in their heart. The Lord says we are a people that do err in our heart, in our mind, because we are sick as a people, man. That's why we're here. Read. And they have not known my ways. Mm. And to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Because that first generation in the wilderness that came out of Egypt, they did not make it into the wilderness. That's why it says, will not come into my rest. They did not enter into his rest, man. Because they had no faith. Guess what? If we repeat the same thing that our forefathers did, we're not going to enter into his rest. And that rest is going to be more than a thousand years. Because a thousand years is a drop compared to the years of eternity. We read it eight. You understand? Now go back to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Now read verse 4. With Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee graven image. You shall not what? Read that again. With Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So now this is the second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Now sisters, mm, don't, don't be buying graven images, man. Molten, they be buying the molten images. That's an idol. <coughs> you understand? Go ahead. Sir. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Go ahead. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Go ahead. Oh, that is in the earth beneath. Ray. Or that is in the water under the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow thyself, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Because that's the key right there. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. So the key is not, the Lord says, the graven images. The, the problem is that our people, they are bowing themselves unto these things. That's what the Lord says not to do. Do not bow down yourself unto these things. Because King Solomon, he made, he, I mean, there were carved images on the walls in the temple. When he was built in the temple. Did he bow down himself to those things? No. The problem is bowing yourself unto these things. That's what not supposed to be done. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself. Because like for instance, I'll give an example. Give me Psalm 74. Because I mean we had and we have a, we have the image of the Messiah that we had drawn according to what the Bible is saying. The biblical description of the Messiah. Do we bow down to that image? No. We do. We did. We have the image drawn, but we don't bow down to it. It's for illustration purposes. 
Okay. Psalm 74. Read verse 1. We go Psalm chapter 74, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Oh God, why hast thou cast us? Why hast thou cast us off forever? Why do thine anger smoke against the sheep of the pasture? We just read the same thing. The sheep of your hand, the sheep of your pasture. Okay, go ahead. Remember thy congregation. He says, remember thy congregation. Come on. Which thou which thou hast purchased of all. Mm. The rod of thine inheritance. Which thou hast redeemed. What's this? This Mount Zion. This what? This Mount Zion. This Mount Zion. That's the Lord's congregation of the Lord. Mount Zion. Come on. Wherein thou hast dwelt. Mm. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolation. What's this? Even all that even all that the enemy had done wickedly in the sanctuary. We're gonna show you what the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. The enemy is the white man. What the white man has done in the congregation. Go ahead. Thine enemies roar in the midst of their congregation. That's what the enemy is. The enemies they roar in the midst of the congregation. What is the enemy doing? The enemy has whitewashed our images in the congregation. Go ahead. They set up their ensigns for signs. They have set up their ensigns for signs. That means we had images that we had drawn. We had our own images. The white man took out our images and put them down and put up his. You understand? Go ahead. A man was famous according to as his, according as he had had. Actually, you know what? Read verse 4 again. Go Psalm chapter 74, verse 4. Read. Thy enemies roar in the midst of their congregation. He says, Our enemies, they roar in the midst of our congregation. Go ahead. They set up their ensigns for signs. They set up their ensigns for signs, meaning they put up their images in our congregations, in our Bibles. You understand? In our history. Jump down to verse 8 and 9. Verse 9, actually. The book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 9. Read. We see not our signs. You see this? Because our enemy, the enemies, what did they do? They set up their insides for signs. That's why we see not our signs. Because they put up their images instead of ours, but they put ours down. That means in order for them to put up theirs, we had images up in there. We had images in the churches, in the congregations, in the synagogues. We had images. But now they took ours down, they put up theirs unto this day. It's called iconoclasm. Okay, they've got two. We've got a two-part series on YouTube that is out. You can we go deep, we dive deep into that. Okay, go ahead. We see not our signs. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Mm. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. You see, how long is this madness gonna continue for? That's the question. So, so the, the what I'm showing you is what the heathens have done. They replaced our images. They put up theirs. So the Lord wasn't saying, don't set up images, because the Lord commanded King Solomon to do it when he was building the temple. The problem was bowing down to these images. That was the problem. Okay, so go down, go back. Yes, Exodus 20. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Go ahead. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Pray. Oh, that is in the earth beneath. We know someone who says that is in the heaven above. Let's just deal with that. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Stop. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Let me touch on that. Give me to Tommy 7, verse 25. I'm going to give an example. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. The Lord says don't do that. This is the second commandment. This is how you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You understand? This is the first and great commandment. Okay, read it. We go to Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 7 verse 25. Listen good. The graven images of their God. Stop right there. The what now? The graven images of their God. The graven images of their God. Whose God? The gods of the nations. When it says the graven images of their, that's why it says you shall have no other gods before me. Which, wait, what is this other gods? The gods of the other nations. That's what he's talking about. Okay, read that again. Verse, 20, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25. Read. The graven images of their gods. Of these other nations. The gods of these other nations. Go ahead. Shall he burn with fire? Shall he what? Shall he burn with fire? You must burn with fire. The graven images of the gods of these other nations that the heathens worship, the Lord says we must set them on fire. And you know how we're doing it? Spiritually right now. 
Right now, that's what we're doing. We're setting fire upon their graven images. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Exactly. Don't desire the silver or gold that is on these graven images of their gods. Right? Nor take it unto thee. Don't take it unto thee. Don't be wearing a cross on your neck. Don't wear, be wearing a picture of Buddha on your neck. Right? Lest thou be snared therein. Because you're going to be trapped. You're going to be snared therein. Go ahead. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Exactly. It is, is the, is the, you see, Buddha is disgusting in the sight of the God of heaven and earth. Krishna is disgusting in the sight of God of heaven and earth. You understand? The white image of Jesus is disgusting in the sight of the, the most high God of heaven and earth. Allah, that black rock in Mecca, is disgusting in the sight of the Lord God of heaven and earth. You see, I have to say it like this so that it pinch the soul. They must know it. Read again. The book Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25. Read. The graven images of their God. The graven images of their God. Shall he burn with fire. Shall he burn with fire. Come on. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Mm. Nor take it unto thee. Read. Lest thou be snared therein. Come on. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Watch this. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house. It says don't take that abomination and bring it into your house. That's why you go into some people's houses, your parents, you know, there's a picture of Buddha up in there. There's a picture of the white image of Jesus up in there on the wall. You understand? Read. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Because the Lord says you're going to be cursed. The Lord says you're going to be cursed just like that thing is cursed. You're going to be cursed. You see our brothers, they be wearing big crosses. And I mean, you see whom rappers? They'll be wearing a big cross on their neck in silver and diamonds. They decorate it. What's his name? Birdman. That's him, man. Birdman. He'll be wearing a big cross on his neck. Bullying away. You understand that? Who these rugby players, soccer players, hmm? actors, Vin Diesel, who he got this big cross on his neck? You understand? So the law says that's an, that's an abomination and guess what? That thing is a cursed thing. And if you continue wearing it, you're going to be cursed like just like it. Go ahead. But thou shalt utterly destroy it. The law says you must utterly destroy it. Come on. And thou shalt utterly avoid it. You must utterly hate it, detest it, despise that thing. Go ahead. For it is a cursed thing. Because it is a cursed thing. Go back to Exodus 20. Read verse 4 again. The book Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Says, Don't make unto you graven images. We just went over this. We just went over an example of that. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Come on. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. I want to touch on that actually. You see when it says any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above? Because when you look at the symbol of um, Islam. Is the moon, is the moon, half disc of a moon, right, and a star. When you look at the symbol of Islam, it's a half disc moon or something like that, and a star, yeah. Not only that, but there's a black rock that they bow down to, they do the hodge. You ever seen that, they, they, on, the, on the side of that thing, there's a shape of a vagina there. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Mubu Atairis be wearing dresses? You cannot make this stuff up, man. Now, watch this. Give it to me four, verse 19. Any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Christianity. They worship the sun worship. Anything that is in the heaven, they worship the sun. You understand? The sun god, Nimrod. The sun god. Semiramis, the moon goddess. That's what Islam is worshipping. Semiramis. The moon goddess. Christianity, they worship um, the sun, sun worship, the son of Nimrod, Tammuz. So Christianity, they worship Tammuz, the son of Nimrod. Islam, they worship the mother and the wife of Nimrod. Hmm? 
Go ahead. Deuteronomy 4 verse 19. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19. Read. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. That's it right there. And lest thou lift up your eyes unto heaven. Come on. And when thou seest the sun. You see the sun. Christianity. Sun worship. Why do you think they go to church on Sunday? Sun worship. Okay, go ahead. And the moon. That's Islam. Moon goddess. Semiramis. Read. And the stars. And the stars. Because remember, now this goes into Tammuz. That's why it says, uh, you see in the Roman Catholic Church, there's a thing called IHS. You understand? It's um, Isis, Horus, and Seth. Mm, Isis, Horus, and Seth. IHS. IHS. That's Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. It's always been like that from the time of Genesis, the 10th chapter. It's always been that. The people that is confused is our people in the churches because the white man has found the, the, the most subtle way of deceiving our people. He's using the Bible to push his own thought. Okay, come on. Unless thou lift up, unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, mm. and when thou seest the sun and the moon, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the stars, come on, even all the hosts of heaven, even all the hosts of heaven, that's the planets. I'm going to touch on that. Even all the host of heaven. That goes into planets, Ben. You understand? Go ahead. Should us be driven to worship them? That's on one level goes into planets. One level. Oh, go ahead. Should us be driven to worship them? Should us be driven to do what now? To worship them. That's what Christianity has been doing. That's what Islam is doing. You understand? Go ahead. And serve them. And what? And serve and them. serve them. Come on. Which the Lord thy God has divided unto thee, has divided unto the, all the nations under the whole heaven. Watch this. But the Lord had taken you mm. and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. The iron furnace that this is what it says, yokes of iron upon their necks. This is now slavery. This is Egypt. Go ahead. Even out of Egypt. Mm. Go ahead. To be unto him a people mm. of inheritance. As ye are this day. As you are today. As you are unto this day. You understand? So give me 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 4. 2 Kings 23 verse 4. You see, idolatry is the reason why the earth is in, is, is the, is in the mess that it is. Because when you look at a cigarette smoker, what is their goal? Cigarette, that's more than thing is ruling their whole life. Understand it. Come on, read that. The second book of Kings, chapter 23, verse 4. Listen good to this. And the king commanded Hil Hilkiah, the high priest, mm. and the priests of the second order. Go ahead. And the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made of Baal. They made for Baal. They were made for Baal. So guess what? There were vessels that were created for Baal. You know what these vessels are? The graving images. These graven images are the vessels that were made for Bea. One of those graven images is what? The Christmas tree. That's the image for Bea. The cross on your neck, the image of Bea. You understand? That, that feast thing, that's a woman power, the image of Bea. That's for worshipping of Bea and Samiramis. Right? And for the grove. Mm. And for all the hosts of heaven. And for all the hosts of heaven. Come on. And he burned them without without Jerusalem. And outside of Jerusalem, they were burning these. Go ahead. In the fields of Kedron, mm. and carried the ashes of them in, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. They took this to the house of God. You can't make this stuff up. Go ahead. And he put down the idolatrous priests mm, because there were priests that were they were set up just to worship idols. Go ahead. Today you've got the Sangomas there. The Sangomas are good for them. This is them. Go ahead. And he put down the idolatrous priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah mm. and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal right. to the sun. To the what? To the sun. To the sun. And to the moon. And to the moon. And to the planets. And to the what? And to the planets. And to the planets. Why do you think now... The white man is obsessed with going to space. He goes to the moon. He wants to go to Mars. He wants to colonize Mars. Why do you think they are obsessed with that? Because that's what we're reading here. All of that is idolatry. It's all idolatry. 
Now, that's why you see black men and black women, they are studying astronomy. Astronomy is the study of planets and whatnot, right? Uh -huh. Right now, what is the black man going to be doing up there? What for? What are you doing up there? For, for, in, for what? What are you going up there for? Hmm? But you see, black men and black women might be easy, but no, we are going to join SpaceX. We want to go up there. You're going to die up there. You understand? Because it's not your time yet. Just wait. You understand? Until the chariots be coming down to pick us up. Wait on that day, man. Why you want to be traveling with a man-made ship? I don't want to go up there with them. What for? When there's a chariot with chariots of fire, which are spirits and not men, why would I want to travel with them? No, I want to travel with the chariot of the most high God of heaven and earth. I don't want to be jumping in no spaceship, man. That Esau has made. You remember the spaceships of Colombia when it blew up in the air? Our people were up in the, I was in varsity when that thing happened, man. It was all over the news. They were showing us the space shuttle Columbia that blew up when it was in mid-air going up there. The angel of the Lord he said, nah, don't worry, I got this. As soon as it went up, the Lord says, go down there, stop this thing. The angel just said, boop, and that thing just blew up in the air. You understand? So... The black man must just relax. Keep God's commandments and he, guess what? You'll go up there and wait. You don't even need to say you'll fly up there. You understand? You'll be teleporting, man. Let me come down. Read the Bible for me. Come on, man. Yes, Read verse 5 again. The second book of Kings, chapter 23, verse 5. Read. And he put down the adulterous priests mm. whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places. In the cities of Judah, go ahead, and in the places round about Jerusalem, Read. them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, mm. and to the planets. You see that? That's the host of heaven. To the planets. Read. And to all the hosts of heaven. And to all the hosts of heaven. That's why you see, like um, in the movies, you see that uh, when uh, when you know these white the white kids, you know the white movies is mostly white people. When they put their kids to bed, there's a picture of a white naked baby angel here on the top. That's the other host of heaven. The angels. The angels don't want to be worshipped, man. And I'm going to show you. Give me that in Revelation 19. Is it verse 10? Revelation 19 verse... Yeah, verse 10. Listen good to this. The angels don't want to be worshipped, man. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Watch this. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Now, this is John. John says, I fell at the angel's feet to worship him. Watch this. Go ahead. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. See, thou do it not. Meaning, don't, don't bow down and worship me. Go ahead. I am thy fellow servant. I am your fellow servant. Come on. And of thy brethren. And of thy what? And of thy brethren. Man, that's some heavy stuff. Go ahead. That have the testimony of Jesus. That have the testimony of Jesus. Come on. Worship God. Worship what? Worship God. Worship God. Come on. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's it. So the angels don't want to be worshipped. But in the movies, that's what they make it seem like it's okay to do. No. That is not okay to do. You understand? When somebody has a dog, it dies. They bury it like somebody died. <laughs> I've seen white people be doing stuff like this, man. They even made a movie about it. It's called All Dogs Go to Heaven. You seen that movie? They, you, you watch it. It was an animated movie, right? Some, they say all dogs go to heaven. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes real quick. 3 verse 21. I think that's what I want. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 21. Listen good to this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 21. Read. Come on. Who knoweth the spirit of man? Who knoweth the spirit of man? Come on. That goeth upwards. That what now? That goeth upwards. The spirit of man goeth upwards. Read. 
and the spirit of the beasts. The spirit of the beasts. These are animals now. Goat, sheep, cow, dog. Go ahead. That go downward. To Where does it go? That go downward to the earth. To the what? To the earth. Uh huh. So that move is wrong. There is no such thing that all dogs go to heaven. That's not biblical. Go ahead. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. Mm. For that is his for that is his portion. Go ahead. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Is there a, you see what it's saying? Who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? I'm not answering that. I'm not going into that. I just wanted to show you that verse 21. So, so, so the point is this. The things that, what, what I want you to understand is that idolatry is everywhere. Especially in the movies, they make it seem like, no, it's nothing. Because look at the movie. I mentioned it also, I think it was last week. The um, Fast and Furious. Every single time where there's a conflict, the brother be holding the cross. Hold this. Hold this. My father gave me this. My mother gave me. It protected me. There's no such thing. But guess what they are teaching? It's, it's subliminal advertising. They are teaching you to, to wear a cross on your neck. Like Vin Diesel on Fast and Furious. That's idolatry. You understand? So go back. Now give me wisdom of Solomon 15. Wisdom of Solomon 15. Yeah, 15, start of verse 3. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 3. Come on. For, for to know, for to know thee is perfect righteousness. To know the Lord is perfect righteousness. We read it earlier. Give me that in First John 2 and 3 again. To know, because to know thee is perfect righteousness. Okay. First John chapter 2. Read verse 3 and 4 for me. The first book of John, chapter 2, verse 3. Watch this. And hereby we do know that we know him, mm. if we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. That's why it says, for to know thee is perfect righteousness. How do we know the Lord? We keep his commandments. Go ahead. He that said, I know him. He that said, I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. You know how the, what this translates to, into? I have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's what you'll be hearing our brothers and sisters, especially the sisters. I have a personal relationship with Jesus, but he's wearing pants. You have a personal relationship with Jesus, but you're wearing pants. There's no such thing. Which one is that one? is the devil. That's your ngulungul. You're wearing pants as a sister. Your ngulungul is not the God of heaven and earth. It's Satan. You understand? Guess what? And guess what? When you read it, they're not going to believe it then. Good luck with the yeast infections. Hmm? Good luck with the stinking coochie. How about that? But they are not going to stay away from it. They are going to continue because they will find the same. The same is going to go down there. Mm -mm. Go down south. No, 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 don't. Please, yeah. Do not. I bet mean, Red Robot comes once a month. But if you were in pants as a sister, I'm going off topic now. Let me come back. Read the Bible again for me. Hey. Verse 4 again, man. The first book of John, chapter 2, verse 4. Okay, I'll use the brothers as well. <laughs> brothers be like, <sighs> give me the precept. <laughs> you understand? Know Brother be high. He's pulling a precept. Come on, man. Read verse 4 for me. John chapter 2 verse 4. Read. He that said, I know him, mm. and keepeth not his commandments. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. Is a liar. You say you love God, but you don't keep his commandments. You're a liar. So you are already breaking one of the ten commandments, man. Already. Read. And the truth is not in him. Because guess what? What's in them? The lies are Satan is on them. They've got the devil on them. Okay. Mm, that's it on there. Go back to wisdom of Solomon, man. 15. Read verse 3 again. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 3. Read. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. To know thee is perfect righteousness. How do we know the Lord? We keep his laws. Come on. Yea, to know thy power mm. is the root of immortality. Exactly. 
To know the power of the Most High God, that's the root of immortality. You know what's the power of the Lord? Give me that in Acts 1 and 8. Watch this. To know that power is the root of immortality. Not living a thousand years. That's not immortality. You see, everybody after Adam is sinned, they were not immortal. They were not. 969 years is not immortality. It's a drop to a thousand years to, to the, compared to the years of eternity. Read what you got. Of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But he shall receive power. He shall what? He shall receive power. But you shall receive power. Come on. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see where the power come from? When you receive the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord upon you. The Spirit of the Lord to get it is the keeping of the commandments of the Most High. It's not this warm fuzzy feeling that make you cry. Mm -mm. That's not the Holy Ghost. Okay. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 15. Read verse 4 now again. Read verse 4 now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15 verse 4. Read. For neither did the mischievous invention of man deceive us. You see, because the, in, the mischievous inventions of man will not deceive us. Because that's letting you know that the gods of these other nations is a mischievous invention. You understand? The, oh, give me that in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20. The mischievous inventions of men, these inventions that the white men be coming with, the Chinese men be coming with, all of that is mischievous inventions. You understand? It's not righteous inventions. It's because are any of them designed to glorify the Most High? No. Because when the Chinese build this mega train, they put the picture of a dragon upon it. They, they will hoist Jude Buddha upon it. They'll put Buddha on it. The East Indians, when they do a major invention, Krishna is sitting up on it. You understand? Buddha, you see this fat man, this fat ugly man just be sitting on it. Because that's who they glorify. They are idols. You understand? Read. The first book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 20. Come on. Oh, Timothy. Mm. Keep that which is committed unto thy trust. Keep that which is committed unto thy trust. Come on. Avoiding profane and vain babbling. It says you must avoid yeah. profane and vain babbling. Come on. And the oppositions of science. And what now? And the oppositions of and, science. And, and oppositions. What is it? What is the first book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 20. Read. Oh, Timothy. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Come on. Avoiding profane and vain babblings mm. and oppositions of science, falsely so called. You see what the Lord is saying? So, this, uh, this so called science of the white man is not science, it's witchcraft. Because you need to understand the white man is a witch, man. He's so, you know, the white man is a witch. He's bewitched our people with science and technology. That's why it says oppositions of science falsely so called because this is not the real science because the real science of the bible is very clear when you read it but the science of the white man completely goes against what's written in this book because it's not science it's witchcraft so the white man is a witch understand it okay go back It was almost Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4. Read. For neither did the mischievous invention, invention of man deceive us. So the white man's invention is not witty inventions. No, these are mischievous inventions. Okay, go ahead. No, an image spotted with diverse colors. No, an image, this, this image is a graven image which is spotted by diverse colors. Go ahead. The painter's fruitless labor. Because it's a fruitless labor. You're not going to learn anything from this. Go ahead. For neither did the mischievous. Verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. The sight whereof enticed fools to last after it. You see this thing? It says the sight thereof, they're looking at these things. It says it entices fools to last after it. That's why you see all these mega projects. You see when you go to YouTube? You see all these mega cities that China is building, these mega cities that the Arabs are building in Saudi Arabia. You know, you, cause you see the project here, uh, the Taj Mahal. I mean, that thing was built in the 90s, man. 
the Taj Mahal, that project began in the 90s. That project. It finished recently, but it's a project that spent the number of years. And guess what? That whole thing is to what? Is to worship Allah. That thing is to give glory to Allah, that black rock in Mecca. You understand? Read. The site went off in Tyson Pool. That's why people want to go to Dubai. What do, when they go to Dubai, where do they want to go? They say, no, we want to see. No, no, not the Taj Mahal, the Bej Khalifa. The Taj Mahal is the one in India. You understand? No, not that. The Bej Khalifa. The Bej Khalifa is the tallest building in Saudi Arabia. That's the Bej Khalifa. They say, no, 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 no. We want to go to the see the Bej Khalifa. The tallest building in Saudi Arabia. They want to go there. Nobody goes to Saudi Arabia and say, I want to go to the beach. Mm -mm. When somebody goes to Paris, Paris, where do they go? They say oh, they want to see the Eiffel Tower. What is that? That's an idol, man. You understand? When somebody go want to go to Australia, where do they want to go? They want to see that thing in Sydney. Man. Those buildings in Sydney, that is next to the waters. They don't want to see the waters. Mm -mm. They want to see the buildings have been there. They want to go in and see. People want to go to the U.S. They say, no, we want to go to Times Square. It's just the building, but no, 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 no. It represents, a, that's an idol. It's all idolatry. You understand? Go ahead. There was also in chapter 15, verse 5. The site were of enticed fools mm. to last after him. Go ahead. And so they desire the form of a dead image. That's exactly. The Bej Khalifa is the form of a dead image. Caesar possesses that white image of Jesus. That's a dead image. Come on. There is no bread. That has no what? There is no bread. That has no bread. Read. Both they that make them. Both they that make these things. Come on. They that desire them. And they that desire these things. Go ahead. And they that worship them. And they that what? And they that worship them. You see the steps to madness? This, this, is, this, is, the, this is the depths of Satan. Because there's levels to, satan, to satanism. There's levels to it. Go ahead. Are lovers of evil things. That's it right there. So the people that love these things, he says, they are lovers of evil things. They love evil things. Go ahead. And are worthy to have such things to trust upon. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, you deserve to trust upon that day. When things, bad things happen unto you, don't cry. Don't come in crying unto me. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? So go back. Mm. You know what, man? Nah, I want to deal with this. Go, give me Romans 1. Okay. Romans chapter 1, read verse 25. We're still dealing with, I'm still dealing with these graven images. And, um, you know, that is in the heaven above, that is in the earth beneath. Because these things are also on the earth, you see? Yeah. Romans 1, verse 25. Listen good to this. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Stop right there. What is the truth of God? Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 142. The truth, what is the truth of God? The truth of the most high God of heaven and earth. What is the truth of God? Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. You see, this is the truth. The truth of God is the law. The truth of God is the law. So now, go back. Give me, now give me Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3. I'm going to show you who changed the truth of God into a lie. Who changed the laws of God into a lie? Who did that? The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Now listen good to this. Let no man deceive you by any means. You see what the apostle, because remember, this is writing to the Thessalonians. Israel is scattered in Thessalonica. Okay, come on. For that day shall not come, mm. except there come a falling away first. Meaning Israel must go into captivity. You can read about that in Luke 24. Is it Luke 24? Yeah, Luke 21, 24, down. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. And the man, and the man, and that 
and that man of sin be revealed. You see, and that man of sin be the man of sin is the man that must not deceive you by any means. That's the man. Go ahead. The son of perdition. The son of hell and destruction. This is the white man. Go ahead. Who opposed mm. and exalted himself above all that is called God. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? This man right here. You see, this man is the one that changed the truth of God into a lie. What did he, how did he do it? Verse 4 again. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. We just read it. Kim, go back to Sarah 36 and 10. We read it earlier. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Listen good. Sarah 36 and 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 10. Read. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen mm. that say, Come on, there is none other but we. There is none other what? There is none other but we. There is none other but we. The Lord says, You shall have no other gods. You shall worship no other gods. The heathen say, The head of the rulers of the heathen say, No, there is none other but we. You understand? So go back. Second Thessalonians 2, read verse 4 again. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 4. Mm. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God? Read. Oh, there is worship. That is what? Oh, there is worship. So who, who has exalted himself above all that is called God? And not only that, but he's also worshipped in the churches. Who's that? There's only one man on this earth who wants who does that. And the other nations, they just follow along with it. Go ahead. So, that he, as God, mm. seated in the temple of God. Go ahead. Showing himself that he is God. We read it in Psalm 74, verse 4. That's what we just read. Okay. Go ahead. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, mm. I told you these things. Go ahead. And now ye know what withholdeth he, what withholdeth. That he might be revealed in his time. So this man of sin will be revealed in his time of rulership. That he is the devil the Bible speaks of. Okay. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then. Uh, you know what? Read verse 7. Let's just read verse 7. The second book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. Read. For the mystery of iniquity. God already works. Stop. It says the mystery of iniquity is already ruling right now. During the time of the Apostle Paul. So who was ruling during the time of the Apostle Paul? Rome. So Rome is the mystery of iniquity that does already work during that time. And now Rome is back. You understand? It's calling itself Babylon the Great. The United States of America. Go ahead. Only he. Who now let him? The, let him. the he that let him is the Mosai that is letting him rule. Go ahead. Until he be taken out of the way. He, until he be taken out of the way. The day is going to be taken out of the way. That's when Isaiah 63 will be fulfilled. You understand? That's when he's going to be taken out of the way. When the Lord's prayer come to pass. Go ahead. And. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked, you see what, how it's written? And then shall that wicked be what? Be revealed. Who's going to reveal it, the wicked? The prophets will reveal the wicked, and black men and black women will be offended. You can't make this stuff up. You complain and complain and complain and say, We're catching hell while we're struggling. The Lord says, Okay, I'm going to give you the answers. But guess what? You don't like the answers now. You get offended when the answers come. You understand? You complain and say we are in slavery, we are, we are poor, we are at the bottom, the nation don't respect us, we are now, you, all of the laws say, okay, the prophets will arrive, will deliver the truth as it is written. Then you complain. You don't want to leave captivity there. Because the same, the same people that we, we use in the spirit of the Lord to deliver them spiritually from captivity, their minds before the Lord come and deliver us physically, they are the same people that says it was better for us to remain in Egypt than to come in this wilderness and to die. They are the same people today because when brothers and sisters complain and leave this truth, that's them. It was better for us to be in Egypt than to come in the wilderness and struggle. 
is the same spirit. Them same spirits back there, back today. Same ones. Okay, come on. And then shall that wicked be what now? And then shall that wicked be revealed. Uh -huh. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The Bible will be coming out piece of book, piece. That's how the Lord going to consume the wicked with the spirit of his mouth. The laws of God. Come on. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And the Lord shall destroy, shall destroy the wicked with the brightness of his coming. Because the Lord is coming back. <laughs> Understand that. Malachi 1 and 4. Because I know there's going to be a Christian online talk about, yeah, but how do you know he's the white man? We're giving you the answer. Pay attention and take notes. Malachi 1 and 4. Because Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Whereas Edom said, Whereas Edom said, We are in poverty. We are what now? We are in poverty. So Edom, Esau, Idumia says, We are impoverished. we poor. When was the white man poor? During the Dark Ages. That's when the white man was impoverished. Because remember, there were the dukes. There were the first dukes there on the earth. There was rich. There was wealthy. So when did they lose all that wealth? During the dark ages when we took over. You understand? Go ahead. But we will return. The dark ages started when Rome fell in 193 AD. When Rome fell in 198, that was the beginning of the Dark Ages. If you want to know more, just watch the movie The Transformers. What's that movie's name? Mm. Not the is it the Age of Extinction? Yeah, that may be it. It may be that one. Go ahead. Whereas Edom said, Whereas Edom said, we are in poverty. We are poor. But we will return. But we will do what now? But we will return. So when they returned, that was 1453 during the Renaissance. Okay, go ahead. And build the desolate places. And they said they will return and build the desolate places because there are places they were desolate. You understand? Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. They shall build. Meaning the white man when he returns, if back into power, he will build. That's why everywhere they are building mega cities, mega structures, mega whatever. Everything is just big, big, big. Go ahead. But I will throw down. The Lord says, but I'm going to destroy you. Right? And they shall call them. They're going to call them Edo, Edo. They're going to call Edo. The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. The beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. That's Esau, I do me. Go ahead. And the people. And the what? And the people. Because this is a race of people. A cancer on this earth. Right? Against whom the Lord had indignation forever. So there's no such thing that the Lord forgives the white man. You will never find it in the Bible. There's no such thing that the Lord forgiven the white man. The Lord has mercy on the white man. Mm -mm. The Lord says he has indignation against the white man forever. That indignation is not going to change because the white man is trying to run to be the chosen in the church. It's not going to change that man. Whether the white man create, you know, they set up bargaining, charity organizations to feed homeless of our people, it's not going to change that. The white man, his fate is written in the Bible, and is that it? It's gonna continue. It's gonna happen as it is written, and we praise the Lord for that. Okay, yeah, that's it on that. Go back now, Second Thessalonians, Sorry. chapter two, read verse eight again. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter two, verse eight. Read. Right. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then shall the white man be revealed to be the devil. Go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Ray. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Come on. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Stop. You see that? So the white man, is the, his, his, his behavior is after the working of Satan. You see, that's one thing we need to understand. Because remember, we're dealing with Exodus 20 verse 4. Idolatry. Even whose coming is after the working of Satan. Everything the white man does is not because he's smart. It's because he is satanic. You understand? Boo, Albert Einstein. Boo, Paul Dirac. You understand? Boo, Paul, boo. Uh, what do this guy? Gauss. Gauss was a teammate then. Carl Friedrich Gauss. He was German. Book Alfred D. Gauss that came up that invented linear algebra and they, that's what they say to us. You understand? Linear algebra, trigonometry and all this other. No, 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 no. It's because they had Satan whispering unto them what to write. It's not because they are clever. Mm -mm. It's because they've got the devil on them. That's why they are doing these things. Okay, go ahead. 
Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Read. With all power. With all what? With all power. The atomic bomb. Read on. And signs. And signs. And lying wonders. And lying wonders. The lying wonders go into science, technology, Christianity. That's the lying wonders, man. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. But guess what? And this white man is going to deceive a whole lot of our people. A whole lot. Right? Because they receive not the love of the truth. And that's the reason why they have, uh, many of our people are going to die because of this white man. Because many of our people, they don't want to hear the love of the truth. They don't want to hear the laws of God. Right? That they might be saved. That they might be what? That they might be saved. That they might be saved. Come on. For this cause. For because and because of this, because I our people don't want to hear the love of the truth. Right? God shall send them strong delusion. Stop right there. What is the Lord gonna do? God shall send them strong delusion. Right? That they should believe a lie. Stop right there. Because our people don't want to hear the laws of God. The law says he's going to send them strong delusions. These strong delusions are going to come through who? Go back to Romans 1. Romans 1 verse 25. We've got Romans chapter 1 verse 25. So that the man that is going to bring these strong delusions, the law says he will send them strong delusions. These strong delusions are going to come through the one man on this earth. The white man, the wicked in verse 18, 2 Thessalonians. Read that, Romans 1, 25. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Read. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Come on. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Go ahead. Who is blessed forever. Amen. So who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man. The reason why he did that is so that our people... They worship strong delusions. Basically, you know what this means? Our people have been bewitched. In simple terms. Galatians 5 and 1. That our people have now been officially bewitched. Because I saw there's a topic, I, I just saw the title, where this black, this black man, he was on this uh, panel show, it says reviving or repairing or something like that, the great empire of Kemet. Good our people, they love the ancient Egyptians, man. The slave masters. Read the Bible. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Watch this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. So, what I want you to understand is that if the Lord says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Remember what we read in 2 Thessalonians. Go back to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, where it says, verse 11. No, no, verse 10. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 10. Watch this. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. You see that? With all deceivableness and unrighteousness within them that perish. Because when it says deceivableness of unrighteousness is the deceit of sin. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Because they what now? Because they receive not the love of the truth. How are you going to receive the love of the truth? When are you going to get it? Go back to Galatians 5 and 1. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Read. Right. Stand fast therefore in the liberty. Stop right there. The, the only way you're going to receive the love of the truth is when you stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Under grace. You understand? That's how you're going to receive the love of the truth because you stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. You are grateful and thankful. Go ahead. Stand up. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Mm. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Right. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Exactly. He says don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is this yoke of bondage? Now give me Galatians 3 and 1. The yoke of bondage. I'm going to show you this yoke of bondage now. Come on. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Right. Oh foolish Galatians. Oh foolish Galatians. You Israel is scattered in Galatia. You Israelites today in these last days scattered in South Africa. Go ahead. 
Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Because that's the yoke of bondage now. The bewitching of naughtiness with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Go ahead. That ye should not obey the truth. That ye should not obey the truth. Come on. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. Because whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. Crucified among you. Crucified among you. Jesus Christ was crucified. Was crucified among you. How did you get bewitched? That is the question. You saw Christ being crucified. How did you get bewitched? By the white man being telling you, no, no, now the Christ is white. How did you get bewitched by this man? You saw Christ being crucified. Now you believe that Christ is white. How did this happen? The bewitching of naughtiness. You know why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. Yeah, Galatians 5. 5 and 1. Let's read that again. Yes, sir. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Ray. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. He says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Go ahead. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This yoke of bondage is the bewitching of naughtiness. Okay. Go back to Galatians 3 and 1 now. Go Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Oh foolish Galatians. Oh foolish Galatians. Because the Galatians were Israel are scattered in Galatia. In these lands. Come on. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Oh foolish Galatians. Come on. That you should not obey the truth. That you should not obey the truth. Because remember. Go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. We should not obey the truth. The second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 10. Read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish. In them that perish, come on. Because they received not the love of the truth. Because they did what now? They received not the love of the truth. They did not receive the love of the truth. The love of the truth is the laws of God. They did not receive the love of the truth, come on. That they might be saved. That they might be delivered from captivity. Okay, go back now. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 again. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Oh, foolish Galatians. Go ahead. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Come on. That you should not, that you should not obey the truth. That you should not obey the truth. Read. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. Mm. Crucified among you. Crucified among you. Come on. This only would I learn of you. This only would I learn of you. The, the apostle Paul is saying, come on. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law? Is that did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Because by the sacrifices of the law of animal sacrifice, go ahead. Of by the hearing of faith. Or by the hearing of faith, meaning what? To be taught through Christ. To say now the, 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 you must put your faith in Christ rather than in the animal that you used to sacrifice. Okay, that's really what he's saying right there. Okay, now let's go back. 2 Thessalonians 2. Yes, sir. Read verse 11 now. This can go Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. And for this cause. And because of this, come on. God shall send them strong delusion. It says, because you don't want to hear the laws of God. When you don't keep God's commandments, you are under his spell. When you don't obey the laws of God, you are under his spell. The Bible calls it a strong delusion. Okay, come on. That they should not believe, that they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. That they all might be, I'm going to deal with that later on. That they should believe a what? That they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. I'm going to show you the, one of the greatest lies that ever told to our people that are last. Give me Romans 125. Go back there. Romans 125. Okay. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Read. Right. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The white man did that thing. He changed the truth of God into a lie. Come on. And worshipped and served the creature. And worshipped and served the creature. Come on. More than the creator. So who's the creature? The creature is the creation. Now instead of saving the most like God of heaven and earth, you're saving his creation. Which is idolatry. 
You understand? The creature who has changed the truth of God into a lie is the white man. He did that. Okay, come on. Who is blessed forever? Amen. Because the most high God is blessed forever. Amen to them. Read on. For this cause. And because of this. God gave them up to vile affections. Stop right there. You see, you see, when you don't obey the, what the Bible is saying, you must know that by default, you have been given over to vile affections. Vile affections is unnatural affections. You understand? I'll give you an example. You are a young man. You want to have sex. You're not married. That's a vile affection. You are a young woman. You want to have sex. You're not married. That's a vile affection. Is of the devil. That's not biblical. That's a vile affection. Because those things are things that are supposed to be done by people that are married only. Because remember, sex is exclusive actually. Sex is exclusive only to married people. That's it. There's nothing, there's no two ways about it. Nah, nah. Sex is only exclusive to them that are married. If you are not married, you are not part of the club. You cannot enter in. You are not allowed to enter into that married couple club. You can't. You are disallowed by the most High God of heaven and earth. You understand? So the people that are now having sex outside of marriage, guess what? They actually want to be in clubs they don't belong in. Hmm. Read that thing again, verse 4. Verse 26 again. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. Read. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. God gave them up to vile affections. Come on. For even they are women. Now, now, I'm going to show you this great, one of the greatest lies ever told to our people. Men and women that are lustful. Okay, go ahead. For even they are women. They are women. Did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It says now the woman... Because remember, the creature has changed the truth of God into a lie. Now read the Bible for me again. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 26. Read. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. God gave them up to vile affections. Come on. For even their women mm. did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It says the women now have changed them, their natural use into that which is against nature. When you are being slept over by many men, many men, you have changed the natural use of a woman into that which is against nature. It's unnatural for you to be just be dealing with every man that passes by. It's, of, it's, it's unnatural. It's against nature. That, likewise with a man. It's the same thing. Go ahead. And likewise also the man. Mm. Leaving the natural use of the woman. So, now we're getting the Apostle Paul is getting more specific. The man has now left the natural use of the woman. The use of a woman is getting married and procreating any kids. Now the, the man has said, mm -mm. Give, give them, give them some easy. That's them. Again, again they're living their life of publicity. They are in the public. So we're going to use them as examples. Yes, we're going to use them as examples because that's the life they chose. Because guess what? The white man lied to them. Okay, come on. And likewise also the men. And likewise also the men. Come on. Leaving the natural use of the woman. Leaving the natural use of the woman. Come on. Burned in their last. Stop right there. No, what now? Burned in their last. No, I was born this way. Burned in their last. The answer is right there. The apostle Paul is giving you the answer. Read again. What did he say? And likewise also the man mm. leaving the natural use of the woman. So the man leaves the natural use of the woman. Go ahead. Burn in their last. Because the reason why the man leaves the natural use of the woman, meaning one, to deal with the woman according to nature, is because he's following his last. It's not because he's born that way. You understand? Give me that in Ecclesiastes now. Seven. Verse 29. That's what I wanted. The man has left the natural use of the woman because he's burning in his lust. It's not because he's born that way. Mm -mm. It's because of his lust. Read that for me. 
Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Watch this. Lo, this only have I found. Now this is King Solomon speaking. Go ahead. That God had made men upright. God made men upright. From the beginning. The Lord of God of heaven and earth, he made men upright. Upright. Go ahead. But they have sought out many inventions. Mischievous inventions. But they have sought out mis many mischievous inventions of men that deceive them. Because that's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 15. Mischievous inventions of men. They are not going to deceive those that believe and know that to know the Lord is perfect righteousness. You understand? Go back now. Sorry. But they have sought out many inventions. That's why now men be gay. Why? Because of their burning in their life. It's not because they are born that way. The Bible is clear, man. So we are not going to be... Me, I'm, listen. Brothers, do not be bullied by gays and lesbians and, and homosexuals. They're going to be telling you, no, but you must address me as a he. But one more not, this is a woman. They're going to tell me, mm -mm, I'm a he, I'm an it. Non-binary. No, 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 man, I'm not going to subscribe to that. Because now in the companies now, they be telling, they be inviting people to sensitivity training now. There's a thing called sensitivity training. They say, no, you must come to be trained to be sensitive so that they, you can accept a man telling you, no, address me as she. And if you don't, I'm going to go to HR. Go to HR. Me, listen, me, you are not going to bully me to address you as a man, but you are a woman. It's not going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. You ever seen them? The men that want to be, the, the, uh, the men that want to be women, they are gay. You go to retail shops. When you get there, me, when I see them, I'm, I say, hey, John. You will see they are just mad. They don't want you to address them that way. They want you to say hello. No, no, mm -mm. No, no. Me, I'm going to say, hey, John, hey, who's it? Yes. Because I'm, I'm letting you know that me, you're not going to, you're not going to shove this demonic behavior down my throat. It's not going to happen, man. Is not happening. So when I see her sister, she's a type. She's a lesbian. She wants you to say, mm, I'm not going to say, hey, child, hello, my sister. Yes. Hello, my sister. With a mother, your mother, they are mad as hell. I'm not going to change it. Mm -mm. You're not going to force me to, no, mm -mm. no, no, no. Read the Bible again. Because the Lord says they are burned in their last. So they are not born this way. Read the Bible for me. Because somebody going to say, hey, but what about, what's, what's the other one? The runner? He's a runner, isn't he? Castas me. Yes, They're going to say, but what about that? What about him? Is that, what about Castas me? Yes, hey, but why? He look like a man and whatnot. They're going to say, but what about the people that are born with two? Two sexual organs. What, it, guess what? When you are born, there's a medical term they call it. When you are born, guess what they do? One is not functional, so they cut it off. Cut operation, they do that. Yeah, you know what is called in the Bible? Because it's in the book. Let me show you. Give me Isaiah 50. We coming back here. You see, listen. You must be in this Bible so not to be bullied by people that die, by Sodom and Gomorrah, um, the spirits of Sodom and Gomorrah. We will not be bullied by them. Isaiah 56. Okay. Isaiah 56 verse 4. Watch this. The book, of, from, the book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 4. Watch this. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs. Unto the what now? Unto the eunuchs. You see, the eunuchs. They are called eunuchs. You understand? Where the, the reproductive organ don't function. They are born that way. You understand? So you're not going to bully me and say, no, but mm -mm, no, no, no. I'm going to pull this verse on you. Read the Bible again for me. The book, of, the book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 4. Come on. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs. Unto the what now? Unto the eunuchs. So when the one steps up to the camp, that's what you bring up. Come on. That keep my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And choose them. And teach them to keep the Sabbath day. <laughs> you understand? Go ahead. And choose the things that please me. Mm. And take hold of my covenant. Exactly. So when you read about, you're going to read about that in the scriptures, eunuchs. They call them eunuchs. In Babylon, 
our forefathers, they were made eunuchs. They were not born that way, but they were made eunuchs because of what? The, the Babylonians. Because they were, they, they, were, they, were gonna, they were in the midst of women. The keepers of the women and all that, yeah, so they were in the midst of them. They were made eunuchs because they, were, they would be among the women. So they wanted to make sure nothing be going on. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's go back. Romans 1. And by the way, this is the New Testament. That's what you must highlight too. This is the new to this is the apostle Paul after Christ left. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 27. Uh -huh. And likewise, also the men, mm. leaving the natural use of the woman, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust, burned in their lust. You see, they are not born that way. It's because of lust they decide, or no, uh, I want to be a lesbian. Lust. It's not because they were born that way. Because they're going to say, no, but ever since I grew up, and this was, this was the devil. You know why I say that? Because the Bible says so. And also, Esau, what he does is now is, is injecting young, young, young children with hormones. So that when a child is 10, 5 years old, already the child is talking about, I'm confused about my gender. They say, you see, they are born this way. So Esau is trying to change the truth of God into a lie. That's why now you see children now they are being told or no, uh, the child can decide what they do, they can, they can do gender switching surgery. Yeah, six years old, seven years old, a high school child, primary school child, now Iso said it's okay, you can do it. Gender switching surgery in primary school, Iso said no, it's all good. And, 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 what's his name? Dwayne Wade, that basketball player with that uh, sister uh, Gabriel Union. You see what they did to his son? Because his son, his name is Zion, right? They changed his name to Zion now. Because he went, she, he went for this gender switching surgery. And he'd be taking hormones now. Now he's actually in a relationship with a, with a, with a white boy. White boy child. So they gave him hormones and whatnot. His name is now Zaya. And Zaya, we saw him kissing a, a boy. Because now he's a girl. And the father's like, no, no, I'm being supportive. Man, you cannot make these things up, man. You can't. That's how low we have fallen. That's the bewitching of naughtiness. Okay, come on. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 27. Read. And likewise also the men. Likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. Mm. Burned in their lust. Go ahead. One toward another. Mm. Men with men. You see that? Men with men. They are not born this way. It's because they are burned in their lust. Read sword fighting. They are burned in their lust, men. Go ahead. Men with men. Mm. Working that which is unseen because it's unnatural. It's unnatural, man. That's why now they say no, but gay people can have kids. How? How were you born? Let's begin there. Let's start there. How were you brought into this world? Why must I accept you, but you can't accept yourself? You want me to accept you, but you cannot accept yourself. It's not going to happen. Go ahead. And we, we don't hate them. But they must repent. We're going to deal with them according to as it is written in this book. Go ahead. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. That recompense of their what? Of their error. Of their what? Of their error. Because it's an error what they are doing. It's an error against the Lord. Read. Which was me. Which was, which was what? When it says which was me, which was good. Because remember, under the old covenant, if you were doing this, your blood will be still. You will be put to death. Under Christ now, the Lord says, repent. Because if you don't, I'm going to come unto thee quick. The Lord says, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove your candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So it doesn't mean that under Christ, it's okay. Mm -mm. The Lord says, I'm giving you a grace period 
for you to fix this. Under Moses, it was, you sin, you die. That's why it was called the law of sin and death. You sin, two or three witnesses say you did it, you get stoned. That's it. Now under Christ, the law says, I'm giving you time to fix it. If you don't, guess what? You don't want the vengeance that's going to come from the law. Then. Go ahead. And even as they did not like, and even as, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You see what the problem is that they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. That means they don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. Because they know what they are doing is against what the Most High God is saying. So that's why they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. The knowledge of God, they don't want to retain it because the knowledge of God will what? Will cut them. The Lord will call, will what? Will, will, basically, the most high God will pinch them in the spirit to say, what you're doing is against my commandments. You must repent. That's why when, um, I think there's one church where Somizi went up in there, I don't know what he was doing, and he was kicked out of the church. And he went to social media to complain. And the pastor did not bow down. He said, what the hell is this? Me, I'm not going to bow down to you going to social media, talk about my churches. No, 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 no. We don't allow this behavior here. If you come here, you must change your behavior. That's it. I mean, that's a reasonable request. You're going to confuse our children a bit. You understand? Go ahead. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, mm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Because they can't change. They are void of judgment. When you teach them about what the Bible is saying, the first thing, they don't repent. They say you hate them. Because they want what? They want the world to hear them. To say, no, they hate women. We don't hate uh, our brothers in that so-called lifestyle. But they must repent from it because that's against the Lord. Really? God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Come on. To do those things which are not convenient. They are not convenient, these things. Children cannot come out of this. How are you going to replenish the earth from this? You cannot. Okay, come on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. That's the problem. Being filled with all unrighteousness. First John 5, 17. It says, being filled with all unrighteousness. Because that's the greatest, that's one of the greatest lies that was ever told to our people that are last one. To say, no, uh, you know, love is love. That's what you'll be hearing when they say, no, love is love. You know? It doesn't matter who you love. You know, follow your heart. The heart is deceitful. The world tells you, follow this deceitful organ that is sitting in your head. Whether you follow it, the Lord is telling you, I made this organ. You don't follow this. You follow my word. Okay? Read that. First John 5, 17. First book of John chapter 5, 17. Read. All unrighteousness is sin. Read again. All unrighteousness is sin. Read again. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. When it says being filled with all unrighteousness means being filled with all manner of sin. Read. And there is a sin not unto death. There is a sin not unto death. Now go back. The first book of, the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 29. Mm. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with all manner of sin. Come on. Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Mm. Covetousness. Go ahead. Maliciousness. Mm. Full of envy. You see this? So that's why when you see uh, our brothers who now say they are gay, they, they be switching. You see how they walk on the street? He be shaking his palm like, Wamon or Abe, bruh, you stiff. You can't be shaking your palm walking on the street. But they be fussy. Wamon or is that the Lord says full of envy? It's envious. They envy the woman. Likewise, the woman envies the man. That's why they be trying to be, even the type of haircut they get just to make themselves appear to be masculine. They, and guess what? The, the things they do to themselves, they smoke. They be smoking all manner so just so that they can get some kind of a basin out of their voice. That they be doing that. You understand? Go ahead. Murder. Murders. Debate. De the exact, they like to debate. Read on. Deceit. Deceit. Malignity. Mm. 
whisperers. Go ahead. Gossip, break. Backbiters. Mm. Haters of God. They what now? Haters of God. You see what God is calling them? God says these are haters of God. They hate the Lord. Read on. Despiteful. Despiteful. Proud. They are, that's why we have a thing. They have a thing called gay pride. Pride man. They can They get it from here. The Lord is telling you what was going on during the time of Rome. Then, I mean, these are things that was going the, during the time of Rome, the Roman Empire. Guess what is happening again today? You understand? And guess what we're going over? Idolatry. Read on. Posters. Posters. Inventors of evil things. You see, mischievous inventions of men. Read. Disobedient to parents. Uh huh. Without understanding. We, they have no understanding. Go ahead. Covenant breakers. They co covenant breakers read. Without natural affection. Because guess what? When a man leaves the natural use of the woman, that's unnatural affection. When the woman leaves the natural use of the man, that's unnatural affection. Go ahead. Implacable. Implacable. Unmerciful. Unmerciful. Read on. Who? Knowing the judgment of God. Stop right there. You see these people, what they know? That's why they like to recruit. When you look at these, um, our brothers and sisters that are in these uh, gay lifestyle, they like to recruit more people to join that so-called lifestyle. Because they know the judgment of God. They don't want to go down alone. They know the judgment that's coming for this behavior. But they don't want to repent from it. You understand? Go ahead. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Mm. So they know that this this behavior is is what is going to get you killed. They know it. The Lord says they know that this behavior is going to get them killed. So guess what they do? They recruit. You understand? Go ahead. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do the recruitment. They have enablers. So they recruit. You need to understand that, man. So go back. Go back to where was it? <clears throat> Exodus 20. Read verse 4. Because that's where we were. Yes, the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It says thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Go ahead. Or any likeness of anything mm. that is in the heaven above. That is in the heaven above. Oh, that is in the earth beneath. Mm. Oh, that is in the water under the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow thyself, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Because the whole point of the Lord says, don't bow down yourself to these things. That's why the first commandment says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous, am a jealous God. It says, because I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Come on. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children mm. and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the people that do that break one, verse one, they break the first and the second commandment. The law says you hate him. The law says that's hatred towards him. You understand? Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 6. Read. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Mm. And keep my commandments. Go ahead. Thou shalt not You see how you love the Lord? You keep his commandments. Read. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. He says thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Come on. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. He says you're not going to be guiltless if you take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I'll give you an example of that. Give me Proverbs 30 verse 7. He says, don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 7. Read. Two things have I required of thee. Mm. Deny me them not before I die. Watch this. Remove far from me vanity and lies. So he says, he's asking the Lord, he says, remove far from me vanity and lies. Come on. Give me neither poverty nor riches. He says, don't give me poverty, don't give me riches. Go ahead. Feed me 
with food convenient for me. He says, feed me with food convenient for me. This is, give me Matthew 6 verse 33. No, no, no. Yeah, Matthew 6. No. Matthew 6. I think it's verse, is it 11? Yeah. Matthew 6 verse 11. When he says, feed me with food convenient for me. Read that. Of Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Come on. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the precept. Give us this day our daily bread. So the Lord is saying, is the King Solomon is praying. He says, give me food convenient for me. You know the food that is convenient for us? The laws of God. The laws of God is the food that is convenient for us. Okay. So go back to Proverbs 30. Read verse 8. One more again. We've got Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. Read. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Come on. Feed me with food convenient for me. He says, feed me with food convenient for me. Come on. Lest I be food. Because he says, when you, if I'm rich and I'm, then I get full, what's going to happen? And denied. And what now? And denied. I'll give an example. You ever seen these uh, celebrities? With Jay-Z. Jay-Z once said, he says, no, I like to, uh, I believe that there's an intelligent designer. They don't say the Mozart. Mm -mm. An intelligent design, because that's how they deny the Lord. Who Oprah say the same thing? They'll say no, the higher power. They'll never say the most high God of heaven and earth. Mm -mm. They say the higher power, an intelligent design. You'll never find some of those names up in there. That's how they deny the Lord. You understand? Or no, I did it by myself. I didn't need any help. That's what they say. Okay, go ahead. And say. Who is the Lord? Exactly. That's how they say who is the Lord. Isn't that what Pharaoh was saying? Who is the Lord? Read. Oh, lest I be poor. Lest I be poor. And steal. And what? And steal. You see what happens? That's why many of our people, they steal. Because they are in poverty. They say, I don't have. So I'm going to go and steal. But that's wrong according to the Bible. That's why the commandment says, thou shalt not steal. So you can't steal and, and just say, no, but you know, uh, no, the most I don't want to take that. The bottom line is, it is wrong. So, but the Lord is telling us, he said, listen, uh, read that again, lest I what? Lest I be poor and steal mm -hmm. and take the name of my God in vain. And take the name of my God in vain. So that's an example of taking the name of your God in vain. you poor, you get full. And you speak lawfully concerning oppression. And you are poor. You steal and say, I'm poor. What can I do? The Lord is saying, whether you are poor or rich, keep his commandments. And that's the level of understanding we need to come to. Because a lot of decisions that we make, we have a lot of justifications for them. But we don't use the laws of God to set us in the right path. And that's where the problem comes in. And that's something we all must learn. We must all repent from. Understand it. Okay. So go back. Exodus 20. Exodus 20 verse 8. We'll go Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. This is now the fourth commandment. Okay, come on. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Come on. To keep it holy. To keep it what? To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day. You see our people out here, they've forgotten the Sabbath day. But in their spirit knows Oh yeah, today is the day I'm going to rebel. They don't rebel like this during the week. Even the people that don't go to work, they don't do this during the week. But come Saturday, the Sabbath day, they do this. They go to the shops, they bribe, they do cookouts and whatnot, they be groovies and all, but they don't do it during the week. Even the way they don't work, but they don't do this during the week. You understand that, right? Give me that in Jose, man. Hosea chapter 7. Verse 14. Listen good to this. The book of Hosea chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. Exactly. Go ahead. When they howled upon their bed. When they howled upon their bed. So the Lord says... 
we are in trouble, we don't we don't cry upon we don't cry upon our beds unto him. Read. They assemble themselves for corn and wine. You see the Lord, you see what the Lord is saying? He says, But we assemble ourselves for corn and wine. Wherever there's food, guess what? You will find brother, you see black people over there. He says they only gather together for corn, that's food, and wine, drinking. What are they doing now? They are drinking and they are praying. That's why I want to live with cheese and yam and whatnot. Where do you think they come from? We're reading about it here. He said they assemble themselves for corn and wine. Go ahead. And they repel against me. They do what? And they repel against me. You see what you are hearing? This music and whatnot, they're not drinking. That's the rebellion against the most high God of heaven. And that's what the Lord says. They don't gather themselves together according to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Mm -mm. They gather themselves together for corn and wine to rebel against the Mosa. That's why one of the three parties with the benches is because they are rebelling against the Mosa God of heaven and earth. Is this, guess what? This is they are provoking the Lord to anger to his face. Continue. You understand? So go back. Exodus 20. Read verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Come on. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Come on. Six days shall thou labor. Six days you shall. The Lord is. Listen, man. The Mosa is so merciful. He is even. Because the Lord is giving us instruction even down to the T. That's why it says, No jot, no tell shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. <laughs> because He's even telling you when you must do all this. You must work. From Sunday to Friday, you do your work. Come Saturday, it's his day. You know, it's not negotiable. That's really what the Lord is telling us, man. Read on. Six days shall thou labor. Six days you must labor. Do all thy work. You know, because we went over this. You know that class, um, youth unemployment is God's judgment. The reason why you see the youth is unemployed is because they don't observe the Sabbath day. The Lord is telling you, if you keep my Sabbath day, you're going to have jobs for days. But they don't keep the Sabbath day. That's why they don't get no job. That's why from sunup to sundown, they're in the street corners begging. You know why? Because they don't keep the Sabbath. That's why they apply, they say, no, being applied to that place that they're not getting, nobody calling them for a job because they don't keep the Sabbath day. The Lord is telling you, he says, six days you will labor. What does that mean? It means you're going to have a job to labor. Then on the Sabbath day is a day of rest. You come together. You hear what I got to say. And then you get your fuel for the rest of the week. You understand? Go ahead. Six days shall thou labor. Six days shall thou labor. Come on. Do all thy work. And do all thy what? And do all thy work. And do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day, but the seventh day, come on, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Come on. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Exactly. You see what the Lord is saying? Thou shalt not do any work on those days, on that day. Come on. Thou, nor thy son, mm. nor thy daughter. Your son or your daughter. Come on. Nor thy man servant. Mm. Nor thy maid servant, Read. nor thy cattle, mm. nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. You see this? So the Lord is telling you, because these people, all of these people that the Lord is mentioning, your son, your daughter, your maid servant, your maid servant, these people have jobs. They are working. So now, when you don't have, when you don't keep the Sabbath day, you are selfish. That means you basically, you can't employ your people. You can't even refer your, your, your person, your, your, your neighbor to go and get a job. No, no, no. Actually, there's somebody who's hiring. You can go over there. Because you're not keeping the Sabbath day. The Lord is not going to make no job available to you. Even if it's a peace job, you're not going to get it. Because you don't keep the Sabbath day. You understand? Come on. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. Mm. The sea... And all that in them is. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha didn't make this. Allah didn't make this. Krishna didn't create it. Read that again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. No, Krishna. For in six days the Lord. The what? The Lord. Krishna. The Lord. Krishna. The Lord. Use Allah. The Lord. Buddha. 
The Lord. See the portions. The Lord. The Lord. Because we serve a living God, man. In six days, the what now? For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. Buddha and all these, the gods of these other, they didn't do this. It's only the Lord God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that did this thing. And by the way, the nations know that. So the reason why you see the Arabs, they've got Allah, that black rock in Mecca, that's the Tantra. When you see Krishna, by the East Indians, that's another Tantra. You see the white man in Caesar Borges, the white image of Jesus, that's another Tantra. They just be hoeing Tantrams all over the place. Go ahead. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, Read. the sea, and all that in them is, mm. and rested on the and rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. Come on. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. He blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And hallowed it and made it holy. Buddha didn't do this. The Lord God of heaven and earth, He did this. You understand? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now what I'm what I'm trying to show you here is. You see the, the God we serve? He does stuff like this. You're not going to read anywhere where Buddha did this. You're not going to read anywhere where Krishna did all this. Mm -mm. Krishna is a, just a Buddha get this gold fat man that has to be carried around. When, did he, when does he get time to do all this? And this is the problem. So the nations want us to believe that these are gods. That's why the white man will be... That's why now, you know, everything, they're using Greek names, Greek gods. Nike. That's a Greek god of victory. Nike. You understand that, right? So, so all of these, they are trying to make this thing popular. You understand? Yeah. Exodus 16, verse 23. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 23. Read. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. This is that which the Lord had said. This is that which the Lord has said. Not Buddha. Not Krishna. The Lord has said. Come on. Tomorrow is the tomorrow is the rest. Is of, the what? Is the rest. Is the what? Is the rest. Tomorrow is the rest. That the day you rest. Go ahead. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So he was speaking on Sabbath Eve. This is Sabbath Eve. Moses is talking to us. He says, tomorrow is the rest of the Sabbath. Go ahead. Bake that which you will bake today. Uh -huh, on the Sabbath Eve. Go ahead. And see that you will see. Read. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Exactly. Go ahead. That means... Don't cook on the Sabbath. Don't boil anything on the Sabbath. But you must prepare for the Sabbath day. So Friday, that's where you do your cooking. You cook, you bake and whatnot. As soon as the sun goes down, tools down. The spoon must go down. The knife must go back into the drawer. You're no longer cooking. The pots are clean. The food has been put in scaptins. It's white in the fridge. Then... The rest of the Sabbath, that's what we're going to be eating. Cold food. Because the most I don't want you to be busy on that day. That's why you're not supposed to be cooking, man. It's called the rest of the Sabbath day. You're resting. But it doesn't mean you rest from coming together with your brothers and sisters. You rest from being at the plantation. That's the rest. You're not doing any servile work where you get paid. Okay? Come on. And they and they laid it up till the morning, mm. as Moses bade, and it did not stink. Go ahead. Neither was there any worm therein. Come on. And Moses said, Eat that today. Eat that today, come on. For today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Mm. And today ye shall not find it in the field. Because we would go in the field to look for men that came down from heaven. So the Lord says. On the Sabbath day, you are not going to go out there to be looking for men because that's work. You understand? Read. Six days he shall gather it. It says for six days you must gather it. Go ahead. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, mm. in it 
There shall none, there shall be none. There shall be none. I mean, there's not going to be any manna that will fall from heaven on the Sabbath day because why? If it did, what would Israel do? Because they would go out and gather it. And they'd be put to death. You understand? So the Lord says, don't do that. I'm giving you six days where you're going to work. And on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, you come together with your brothers and sisters and observe the Sabbath day. That's what he's saying. Okay, come on. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day. You see, the rebellion of our people. You cannot make this up. Moses just got through telling them, finish it, listen. On the Sabbath, do not go out there and be gathering it. Read. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day, for together, and they found none. And they didn't find it. So that's why, if it was out there, how many people do you think were going to go out and gather it? But the Lord made sure that on that day, there's no men are coming down from heaven, because the people are going to go out. They went out anyway. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Mm. See, for the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Exactly. You see, he says, on the, on the Sabbath Eve, he says, I'm going to give you the bread of two days. So that you run, there's no need for you to go out and gather it. Because I don't want you to go out and break in my Sabbath. That's why on the Sabbath Eve, I'm going to give you bread that is worth two days. Go ahead. Abide ye every man in his place. Exactly. Read. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Uh, meaning what? To gather it. To go work. Read. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people rested on the seventh day. Go ahead. And the house of Israel called the name thereof. Man, mm. and it was like coriander seed. It tasted like coriander seed. You ever had the smell of coriander? Man, it's glorious. Mm. Go ahead. White. Come on. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers, wafers made with honey. Wafers made with honey. So, guess what? But they were complaining about that. How do you complain about something that tastes so good? Because our people were complaining for the sake of complaining. You are so used to complaining, you don't even know why you complain. You know, it's the same thing as come 12 o'clock, you know it's lunchtime. You are full, but you still eat. <laughs> it's not that you're hungry. No, no. Because get 12, get lunch. But you are full. But you're going to go and eat anyway. So now you're no longer eating to live, you're living to eat now. You see the difference? Because get 12. Break and breakfast. No, no, no. I must have my cereal. But you are full. You don't, you're not hungry. But you want to eat. It's the same thing here. Read that again. And for the, book of, the book of Exodus chapter 16 verse 31. Read. And the house of Israel called the name that of men. Mm. And it was like coriander seed. Go ahead. White. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. You see how it tasted? It tasted good, man. Wafers made with honey. And it wasn't this syrup, maple syrup that you see in the shop. Mm -mm. It was proper raw honey. You understand? Not this garbage that we're eating from this camp. No. None of them things. No, no, we were not eating that. It was proper honey, man. Okay. So go back. So I'm showing you that, you see how demonic our people got? The Lord said, listen, man, I'm going to look after you. You're going to do it. They said, nah, we're going to go out there anyway. Numbers. Give me that in numbers. I'm going to give you an example of what's going on today. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 32. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 32. Come on. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. He's told. What He's gathering sticks. What is he doing with these sticks? Chisanya. He wants to bribe. He wants to put a meat on the grill. You understand? Our people, man, we rebellious, man. Go ahead. And they that found him gathering sticks 
and, and they that find him dead on sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron mm. and unto all the congregation and unto all the congregation come on and they put him in one mm. because it was not declared what should be done to him because it was not yet decided on what we're going to do with him you understand go ahead because it was not declared what yes, sir. verse 35 come on the book of Exodus chapter chapter 15 verse 35 read the Num Lord, numbers numbers 15 35 the book of Numbers chapter 15 verse 35 the Lord said unto Moses go ahead the man shall surely be put to death <laughs> the most are not paying man so he's telling you the Lord said listen Moses this man gonna die do you see how the Lord didn't play? That's why our forefathers were afraid of the Most High God of heaven and earth. It's only today when black people, they don't think, yeah, nah, I'm just going to keep doing evil. The Lord not going to do nothing to me. You're wrong about that. Okay, come on. All the congregation shall stone him with stones. No, read the verse again from the beginning. Yes, sir. The book of Numbers chapter 15 verse 35. Read. The Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. You see, there's no if or maybe. The Lord is not confused. No, the Lord knows exactly what's going to happen to him. That's why it says, the man shall surely be put to death. It's not, the Lord is not saying, I'm going to change my mind along the way. Mm -mm. He says, the man shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. And the Lord said, and the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Exactly. You see this? The Mosai has told Moses what needs to be done with this man. Okay, come on. And all the congregation brought him without the camp mm. and stoned him and stoned him without and stoned him with stones and he died. Go ahead. As the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. Now the Lord is like, okay, because I don't want this to continue, this is the solution to y'all. Watch this. Go ahead. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, mm. Speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. And beat them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That's the reason why this the, the law of the fringes came into existence. Because of this. Okay, come on. Throughout their generations. Really? And that they put upon the fringe of the border. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. To hold the fringes. That's why we have fringes on our clothes. Because why? Because of lesson learned. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to help you to do this so that everywhere you go, the fringes are with you. So that when you're about to do something wrong, you look at them, they remind you, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt do it. Because I think you are wearing your clothes everywhere you go. Therefore, the fringes are with you wherever you go. You understand? Come on. That ye may look upon it. Mm, that ye may what? That ye may look upon it. Go ahead. And remember. And what? And remember. That's why you must remember. That's why you must look upon these fringes. To remember. But you know what? Somebody got stoned. The man, the man shall surely be put to death. Guess what? And everybody knew and everybody saw it. So now when you imagine, you just saw that happen. And you are given fringes. Now... A challenge is presented to you. You are about to lie. You will remember what happened to the Negro who got stoned. You're not going to do it. But the reason why these things keep happening because you don't see anybody being put to death before your eyes. So there's no fear. You see, when the Lord returns, it's going to be total dictatorship. There's not going to be no democracy when the Lord returns. There's no such thing. There is no democracy in the kingdom of heaven. It's complete dictatorship. If you don't do it, you die. That's it. So right now, we rehearse in the righteous acts, man. We rehearse it. So don't be playing with the rehearsals. <laughs> don't be playing. You think, oh, no, no. I... Listen, when the Lord returns, woo, that's why it says, with fury poured out will like rain over you. What do you think going to happen? Death, death, death. The most I'm not going to be playing, and it's not going to be the most I've got on heaven, and it's Christ. We're not ready to see the most I've got on heaven and earth, man. Come on, please stop it. You're not ready for the most I've got, the angel of death. We're not ready for him. 
Neither are we ready for the Messiah to return either. You understand? With the Messiah, we're going to be with him for a thousand years. He will be preparing us. And then when the thousand years is finished, that's when the Ancient of Days will show up on the scene. Everything that be moving on that day, the end be crawling, it will be on frozen. When the Mosai goes show up on the sea, the fly will be, listen, frozen in mid-air, just stopping. You understand? Every, everything going to be quiet on that day. Stand still. There, it will be like there's nothing on this earth. Quiet. When the Ancient of Days show up on the sea, the Mosai God of heaven and earth, because he is going to show up, but not now. So we're not ready for the most high God of heaven and earth, man. We're not ready. The most high God of... The, this, the ancient of days. You not, we, none of us are ready for the most high God. We're not ready. That's why we keep it. We have to rehearse over and over. We have to rehearse. The same way we were rehearsing, under the law of animal sacrifice, we must rehearse. Hmm, that's some heavy stuff. Yeah, that's some heavy stuff. We were, mm, we were rehearsing under the law of Moses to, to bring us unto Christ. Now we are under Christ, we are rehearsing to bring us unto the Mosaic God of heaven and earth. Rehearsal. What verse we had, man? Verse 39? Yes, sir. Yeah, read that. Numbers fifteen thirty nine. Come on. The book of Numbers chapter fifteen verse thirty nine. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. It shall be unto you for a fringe that he may look upon that it. That he may what? That he may look that upon you may it. That may look upon it. Come on. And remember. And what? And remember. Because right now our people have forgotten. Even in the congregation, in the truth, the people are still forgetting. Kuri, you are so used to the fringes, you don't even see them anymore. That's a problem. That's a big problem. The fringe is supposed to help to help you to stay in the spirit. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe mm. that he may look upon it. That you may what now? That he may look upon that it. That you may look upon it. And remember. And what? And remember. And remember, come on. All the commandments of the Lord. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do them. And what? And do them. That's what the fringes are there for. To help you remember. The same way you are, when your bladder is full, it reminds you that you must go and empty it to the bathroom. Likewise, the fringes are there for that. Okay, go ahead. That, and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart. Because the one that went to gather sticks on the Sabbath day, he was seeking after his own heart. He wasn't following the most high God of heaven and hell. Right? And your own eyes. And your own eyes. After which ye used to go a whoring. Exactly. Go ahead. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Come on. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt mm. to be your God. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. He's letting you know, don't be worshipping Buddha. He's not the Lord your God. Don't be worshipping Krishna. He's not the Lord your God. He's telling you right there. That's why he says, I'm the Lord your God. Buddha didn't give you no commandments. Caesar Borges did not give you no commandments. You understand? That's why the Lord is telling you, says, I'm the Lord your God. Don't get it twisted. Don't get confused by that. I am the Lord your God. You want to do what I tell you. You understand? Okay, go back to Exodus 12. Verse 11 again. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. Right. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, mm. the sea, and all that in them is, right. and rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. Come on. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Is that it on there? Yes, sir. All praise to the Most High. Go back to Matthew now. Yes, sir. Because that's where we were. I know some of you already forgotten where we were. We were in Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Um, read verse 37 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37. Read. Right. Jesus said unto him, mm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul 
and with all their mind and with all their mind go ahead this is the first and great commandment this is the first and great commandment so i'm showing you here this is how you this is how you love the lord your god you don't have other gods beside him you understand so and the crazy part about it is that our people know the ten commandments they know but they know of them when you read it when he said you know the ten commandments he said yeah he said what is the one he says thou shalt have no other god but there they go on sunday going to worship caesar borges so they know of them because their pastors are not teaching them the right things because yesterday i was talking to a pastor and I was rebuking him and showing him, hey, man, this is this what you, he's a pastor. He's a pastor of a church. So I'm like, listen, you must read the Bible. You must obey what it says. You must teach your congregation the things that are written in it. Because he sells. Woman. So he used to sell cigarettes. And I asked him, I'm like, yo, you know that you know something. Why are you selling cigarettes, man? Why are you selling poison to your people? And then he's like, yeah, you know, you're right, you're right. I'm like, but you must stop. Then the following time when I saw him, he had no longer has them. But no, I noticed something yesterday when I saw him. There was this guy, one morning, he's smelling of cigarettes and whatnot. He came to give him some money. Then I realized something. He removed it in front of the eyes, but he's secretly selling it. That's what he's doing. So he hasn't stopped. He just did it. To, to the eyes, but, and I knew, Rana, no, I don't believe it. Yes, you no longer, I can't see them here where the where his stock is, but I know for a fact that he didn't let it go. He's still selling them. And yesterday, what is confirmation of that suspicion? You understand? So he's still selling them cigarettes. You understand? But I was telling him, you need to keep, you need to teach the people the truth. Why are you teaching the people lies? You understand? He's like, yo, but, 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 but I'm like, you know, you've been dragging your feet. You've been saying you want to come to the congregation. Because I invited him. I'm like, listen, you must come. Come and learn and take the teachings and go teach your congregation. And his name is Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, our forefather, that mighty man, Joseph. Yeah. You understand? So... Matthew 22, verse 37. Once again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mm. and with all thy soul, right. and with all thy mind. Come on. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. Now watch this. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. Okay. Deuteronomy 30. Start of verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. Watch this. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. These things that are come upon us is the blessing and the curses. Okay? That's what has come upon us. We are the blessings. Now we are under the curses now. Read. The blessing and the curse. That's it. The blessing and the curse. Come on. Which I have set before thee. Mm. And thou shalt call them to mind. You shall call the curses and the blessings to mind. You will remember them. So when the Lord wakes you up, the things that that's why when the new people come in, we teach them, we go to Deuteronomy 28. We start there first. We go over them curses. Why? Because you must call the curses and the blessings to mind. You must be reminded of what happened. Okay, come on. Among all the nations, mm. whether the Lord thy God is driven thee, right? and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice. And shall what now? And shall obey his voice. We must obey the voice of the Lord our God. Come on. According to all that I command thee this day. Read. Thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. You see what the Lord says he will do? He will turn our captivity. That means no more captivity. That means the Lord is having mercy upon us. Go ahead. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered. That's what the Lord is doing right now. He's gathering us. The Lord is gathering the twelve tribes of Israel together. Come on. If any of thine 
be driven out unto the uttermost part of heaven. Mm. From thence will the Lord thy God, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. That's what he said. Right now, the most High God of heaven, what is he doing? He's waking us up. Because the time cometh where the Lord will be gathering us from all over the world where we are scattered and take us back to where we come from. You understand? Starting with the wilderness first and then the promised land. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Will do what? Will circumcise thine heart. The Lord our God will circumcise our hearts. Because our heart needs to be circumcised. You understand? Because our mind is unclean. You understand? Go ahead. And the heart of thy seed. And the heart of our children also is unclean. The Lord says he will circumcise the minds and heart of our, our, of our, um, our minds. And not only that, but he will do the same for our children. Okay, come on. Verse 6. Verse 6. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. Right. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayst live. Right. And the, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. Stop right there. This right here, this is good news. You see, all these curses that we're going through right now, the Lord says all these curses will be put upon our enemies. Don't you want that? Hmm? Man, we all want that. We want the Lord to bring the curses that he put upon us, upon our enemies. They must also suffer like we are suffering right now. Okay, come on. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 7. Read. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. Mm. And on them they hate thee. You see that? Because our enemies, they hate. This is Luke 171. You understand? Go ahead. Which persecuted thee, mm. and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments. And what? And do all his commandments. You see what's going to happen when the Most High puts these cases upon our enemies? It says, we're going to obey the voice of the Lord our God, and we will do all his commandments. That means we are not going to sin at all. You understand that? We are going to be literally walking in the footsteps of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which have not sinned against God. Like father, like son. Exactly. You understand? Go ahead. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, thy, of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Read. And the Lord thy God will make thee clenches mm. in every work of thine hand. Go ahead. In the fruit of thy body. Mm. In the what? In the fruit of thy body. The fruit of our body is the children that we will produce. The Lord says he will do what now? He will make us plenteous in the work of our hands. In the fruit of our bodies. Go ahead. And in the fruit of thy cattle. Mm. And in the fruit of thy land. Read. For good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good. The Lord will rejoice over us for good. Go ahead. As he rejoiced over thy father. Exactly. Who did he, which fathers did he rejoice over? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand that, man. Go ahead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You see the condition? It's always conditioned. There's no such thing of unconditional love with the most high. It's conditional. You keep my commandments, we're good. You break them, you see where we are? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Ray. to keep his commandments, to do what? To keep his commandments, Ray. and his statutes, mm. which are written in this book of the law. Stop right there. Which are what now? Which are written in this book of the law. So the Bible is the book of laws, statutes, and commandments. It's not a book of codes. The Bible is a book of laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Go mm. ahead. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God, what verse you in? Verse 10. Verse 10. Okay, read verse 10 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10. Read. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments mm. and his statutes, Ray. which are written in this book of we, the law. Which are written in this book of the law. Come on. And if thou if thou turn unto the Lord thy God mm. with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Read. For this commandment 
For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee. Stop right there. Stop right there. Read that verse again, verse 11. For this what now? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. Read. For this commandment which I command thee this day. It says, for this commandment which I command thee this day is not what? It is not hidden from thee. It is not hidden from thee. You know how it's not hidden? Every day you wake up, the Bible is sitting there. You see, it is not hidden. If you don't see the Bible sitting on a shelf, it's in your pocket on your phone. It's there. You understand that? So there's no excuses you can make. And say, no, it was it, it was not hidden. The Lord is telling you, says, it's not hidden from thee. Go ahead. Neither is it far off. Neither is it far off. The Lord is letting you know there is no excuses that you're going to render on the day of judgment. Okay, come on. It is not in heaven. It is it's not in heaven because if it was in heaven, that's the excuse you'll make. He said, nah, but it's up there. How am I going to get up there? You understand? Go ahead. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up? Who shall go up for us to heaven? Because that sounds like a black man and a black woman talking right here. Who going to go up there for us in the heavens to go and fetch it? You understand? Go ahead. And bring it unto us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? Go ahead. That we may what? That we may hear it and do it. That we may hear it and do it. So he's saying, listen, if it's up there in the heavens, that's another excuse. But it's up there. If you can go up there, fetch it, bring it, we will do it. That What does that sound like? Black people. This sounds like black people to me. Go ahead. Neither is it beyond the sea. Because black people say, I don't know how to swim. How am I going to get I'm going to go down there in the bottom of the ocean. I don't know how to swim. You want me to drown down there? <laughs> so you see, the Lord is, he knows, he knows us. Okay, come on. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, mm -hmm. Who shall go over the sea for us? Go ahead. And bring it unto us. Watch this. That we may hear it and do it. Exactly. Watch this. Go ahead. But the word is very nigh unto thee. But the word is very nigh unto thee. It's very close to you. Come on. In thy mouth. In thy what? In thy mouth. Because you are learning it. You are here, you're learning it. You're telling the people that we are the Israelites, we are the Jews. Every Sabbath, not you know the, 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 the you know the thing about this camp. It's not every Sabbath that you hear the word of God. Every single day there's a class that goes out. Every day. And I mean on a daily. Do you know that on my hard drive, because I still have the hard drive, do you know there's more than 100, 200 classes that are there that have not been aired? More than. Plenty, plenty. And they be going four hours. Five, they have not been aired before yet. Not, be, not before seen. They are going to be seen 10 years from now. You're going to be good, you know. Mm -hmm. Throwbacks. The throwback that you've never seen. They will be coming out. My point is this. The Lord is letting you know the word is very nigh unto thee. You on your phone, there's a WhatsApp group, there's a class every day. You can't make excuses, man, and say, no, I didn't know. Go ahead. But the word is very nigh unto thee. What's this? In thy mouth. In thy mouth. And in thy heart. And in thy heart. That thou mayst do it. That thou mayst do it. Because the reason why it's in your mouth, in your heart, you understand? Is that you may do it is because the classes keep coming out the councils keep happening whether you can't say no 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 me i don't know i didn't know this but you can tell me the things that are going on in social media you can give me the big the breakdowns but you don't know this on the day of judgment you will have no excuse <coughs> because in today's world the ignorance is an ignorance is by choice you are ignorant by choice not an accident, it's by choice. You're doing it on purpose. You yeah. understand? Okay, that's it on that. Go back. Matthew 22, read verse 37 again. The book of Exodus chapter 22, verse 37. Read. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, Read. and with all thy mind. And with all thy mind. Come on. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. The reason why we went to all these other places, it was for this. And even then, it was just a shorthand version of to explain all this. 
You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. And the second is like unto it. And the second is like unto it. Go ahead. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ray. On these two commandments. On these two commandments. And all the law. And all the law. And the prophets. And the prophets. So, when because this scripture, the, what we just read, the Christian church, they love this. They say on these two, just love the Lord and love your neighbor as yourself. They say that's it. But they don't know what this means though. They cannot give you the sense of what it means. You understand? Read again, verse 38. The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 38. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. What's this? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ray. On these two commandments. On these two commandments. Hang all the law. What's written in the law of Moses. Go ahead. And the prophets. And what's written in the prophets. So you see what the prophets, they, they spoke, they taught out of the law and out of the prophets. Christ did the same thing. You understand that? The apostle Paul did the same thing. All the prophets did the same thing. So when we read the Old Testament, we're doing exactly what the prophets of old was doing. Not only that, but we, because whenever you bring a scripture, but, but they no, but that's the Old Testament. You know what that means? It means that they are, they are a Christian pastor over them. It's just simple as hell. You understand? Give me that in Matthew 12. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Matthew chapter 12. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me see. Is that what I want? Yeah, that's the one. Matthew 18. Read verse 51. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 51. What's this? Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. Have ye understood all these things? Have you understood all these things that I've taught unto you? Come on. They say unto him, mm. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. They say, yeah, we understand. Go ahead. Watch this. Then said he unto them, mm. Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. He says, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Is like unto a man that is a householder. Because Christ is the householder. Go ahead. Which bringeth forth out of, the, out of his treasure. He is bring, which bringeth forth out of his treasure. Come on. Things new and old. Things new and old. So a good scribe will teach out of the old covenant and out of the new covenant, out of the law and the prophets. You understand? So if the pastor be easy and not be easy, or he's just in the New Testament, he doesn't see the big picture. He's lost in the source. You understand? Because the Lord is letting you know. Read again verse 52. The book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 52 uh -huh. Then said he unto them Therefore every scribe Which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven mm. Is like unto a man That is a householder Go ahead. Which bringeth forth out of his treasure mm. Things new and old Things new and old Let's get some example of that Give me Luke 24 verse 25 I'm going to give you an example Okay. Now this is Christ This is the Messiah man The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 25. Read. Then said he unto them, mm -hmm. O oh, fools. O oh, fools. And slow of heart. And slow of heart. Come on. Believe all that all that the prophets have spoken. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. Come on. Or not Christ to have suffered these things. Or not Christ to have suffered these things according to as they are written. Read. And to enter into his glory. And to enter into his glory to resurrect. And go to set the right hand of the majesty on high. Go ahead. And beginning at Moses. And doing what? Beginning at Moses. You see where Christ began when he taught? And beginning at Moses. Because Christ was a good scribe. Out of things new and old. Come on. And all the prophets. And what? And all the prophets. You see how he did it? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Come on. He expounded unto them in all 
He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. In all the scriptures, the things, the, the concerning, things himself. concerning himself. The things concerning himself. You see what Christ? You see how Christ did it? So when we do it, those that are not in the spirit of the Lord with us, they are going to murmur and complain on the inside. You understand? Give me the book of Acts. Give me Acts 26. Acts 26 verse 22. Listen good to this. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 22. Listen good. Having therefore obtained help of God, mm. I continue unto this day. He says, I continue unto this what? Unto this day. Guess what? The apostle Paul is back. He says, I continue unto this day, 2024. The apostle Paul is back. Go ahead. Witnessing both to small and great. He says, I'm, I'm back and I'm witnessing both to small and great. Go ahead. Saying mm. none other things. I'm, I'm saying none other things, meaning I'm teaching none other things. Come on. Than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Exactly. You see how we taught? He taught from the old and the new. Out of the law and the prophets. That's the same thing that we do, amen. The same thing. There's no difference. So whenever when you teach, brothers, and you pull a scripture from the from the law of more from the law, from the first five books, don't bug out. When a Christian talk about no, but there's no, that's the old testament. Oh, and, and so what's your point? That's the question you ask them. Okay, and <laughs> So, 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 because that's the, you must ask them the question. Okay, that's the old time. Oh, okay. And then the armor bearer, you tell them to read the scripture. Read the scripture, man. So that's how you must deal. You must be hard-headed for this. When you are teaching what they do, not let the person that come to here dictate where you should go. Mm -mm. You the teacher. He's big calamantin the stage is wasting time. You the one now that all I raised you up. You must the, you have authority to teach him. The Lord has raised you up to teach him with boldness. Don't be playing with them. You are not supposed to be playing with none of our people when only come to this Bible. The minute they start to say, No, the Bible, you must rip their hair off with this Bible. In the spirit of the Lord. That they must when, even when they are sitting home by themselves, they're like, yo. You know, like the way these things came out. You know, I was so mad on the inside, but oh my God, he's reading the Bible and I've got nothing to say. He will never forget. Go back. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Verse 38 and 39. The book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 38. No, no, 39, 39. The exactly. mm -hmm. book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 39. Read. Right. And the second is like unto it. Come on. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm. On these two commandments. On these two commandments. Have all the law and the prophets. Oh, praise to the most high. Now, you know the heavy thing about this? Give me Leviticus 19. Because when you read the, the, the Ten Commandments, you're not going to find it written exactly like this. You're not going to find it this way. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Come on, man. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You must in any wise rebuke your neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin upon them. Go ahead. Watch this. Thou shalt not avenge. Thou shalt not avenge. Nor bear any grudge. Nor bear any, any, any. There's a reason why he's using the word any there. There must not be any shred of grudge in your spirit towards your neighbor. None. Zero. You see, now we're getting to love. The, we're getting to now love your neighbor as yourself now. You see, that's where you see Israel is struggling. Because the first one is not like Israel is not struggling. They are still struggling. We're still struggling. But you see the second one? That is like unto the first. Woo! Man, that's a whole new class by itself. You understand that? Read the Bible for me. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh-huh. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother, thy brother in thy heart. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You must in any wise. When he say in any wise, you know what this means? Give me, me, give me Psalms 19 verse 7. You must in any wise. When he says in any wise, this is how you do it. Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what it means in any wise. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Watch this. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. Converting your soul, your mind. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Is when he says it's sure, that means according to prophecy it will come to pass, no matter what. Read. Making wise the simple. Making wise the what? Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. So when he says thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, it means you must use the laws of God to rebuke your neighbor in any wise according to the law. That's what it means. You understand? So go back. Leviticus 19. Verse 17. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You must not hate your brother in your heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You shall, according to the law, rebuke your neighbor. Come on. And not suffer sin upon him. And not allow your brother to be in the midst of sin. That's what the Bible is saying. And let me tell you something. You see this part right here? Because, well, you see, we read this verse. Because now we get into it now. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. The big, this is milk, by the way. We went over there. We didn't go anything. Nothing deep. Just the milk. Okay, don't be choking on the milk now. Now, read the last part of that verse. And not what? And not suffer sin upon him. You see, when you read it, it sounds so nice. But in practical, give me, uh, give me, give me Proverbs 15. I'm going to show you something. Hmm. Give me Proverbs. The Proverbs Solomon. Proverbs chapter 15. Yeah. Read verse 10. It says, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Let's deal with that. Proverbs 15 verse 10. Listen good to this. Go Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Come on. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Stop. It says correction is grievous to him that forsaketh the way. So when you forsake the way, the Lord says, we're going to correct you, right? You must in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So now when we correct your neighbor and when you don't want to let go of that, that's why it's grievous. The reason why you find correction grievous unto you is because you've forsaken the way and you don't want to be brought back to the way. That's why correction becomes grievous unto you. That's why you don't like it. Because you know why? You are in love with that sin. You are in love with that lust. That's why when correction comes, you get mad. But when we read Leviticus 19, 17, everybody loves that verse. But as soon as correction comes, you get mad. You know why you get mad? Because you are in love with that lust. That's why you don't want to let it go. So when the Lord is using the prophets to pull you out of that matrix, you get mad. That's why Morpheus was saying, they even going to fight you. The same people that you are trying to pull out of the matrix, they're going to fight you. Okay, come on, read again and finish it. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. What's this? And he that had, and he that hated reproof shall die. Shall what now? Shall die. Exactly. If you hate correction, the Lord says you're going to die. How are you going to die? In your sin. I give you wrong when I let it go. So now, to be your brother's keeper, what do you think that means? Your brother's keeper is not when you need arms. No, no, no. That's not the only time you need it. No. You being your brother's keeper means you gonna be, must needs be corrected. When you go the hell off, we must correct you to bring you back. Because we're trying to get to the kingdom, man. Go ahead. Now read verse, yeah. Read verse 12. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 12. Uh -huh. A scorner. A what? A scorner. A scorner does what? Love it not one that reproveth him. Exactly. The Lord says, if you are a scorner, you're not going to love the brother who's correcting you. Because you are a scorner. So the Lord is telling you, the reason why you are grudging. The reason why you have hatred. The reason why you have resentment. Is because the Lord is telling you, you are a scorner first and foremost. That's why when you get corrected, you hate the brother bringing the correction. 
Therefore, you hate the Lord. But you're not going to think about the fact that you are a scorner. Mm -mm, you're not going to think about that. But you just hate the brother. But you are forgetting what the But Me, I'm not going to believe what you say. I'm going to hear what the... The Bible says, a scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. So therefore, you hate the brother that corrects you, you're a scorner. So who do you think I'm going to believe? You? No. I'm going to believe what the Bible is saying. Read again. The verse 12. Well, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 12. Mm -hmm. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Watch this. Neither will he go unto the wise. He's not going to go unto the wise. You know why? Because the, that's why it says, But thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. The scholar will not go unto the wise. Because what do the wise have? Their commandments. What, are the, what, what counsel would the wise give? The commandments. So whatever counsel that you're going to receive at the mouth of the wise in the spirit of the Lord is not going to be nothing else but what is written in this book. You're not going to go there. You're not going to go because you don't want this. So, you know why I'm, I'm starting with this? Give me first John. I'm starting with this for a reason. Because it's a thing of, you know, we were with you this whole time. But now, you're starting to become personal now. Yes, of course. In the spirit of the Lord. You understand? First John, chapter 2, verse 19. The first book of John, chapter 2, verse 19. Listen good to this. They went out from us. No, no, no. First, oh, first John 4, verse 19. First John 4, 19. Yeah, that's it right there. Watch this. The first book of John, chapter 4, verse 19. Mm -hmm. We love him. We love him. Because he first loved us. That's Christ right there. The first fruits. Go ahead. If a man say, mm. I love God. Because that's why we went over this in, in the first place. We started with that commandment first. Because somebody's going to say, I love God. Now we're going to put it to the test. I get you say you love the Lord. You love the Lord. Let's put it to the test. Verse 19 and verse 20 again. The first book of John chapter 4 verse 20. Uh -huh. If a man say, I love God. Because you're going to say, me, I love the Lord. Okay, go ahead. And hated his brother. Stop right there. So now your brother, you, I get you, the first thing you said, you love the Lord. You could, you love the most of God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Right? Then, Correction comes. Then you hate your brother. You don't love the Lord. Correct. You just go through saying you love the Lord. <laughs> then correction comes unto you in the spirit of the Lord. Then you 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 grudge him over the brother. You hate your brother because he corrected you. You don't love the Lord. You was lying. You see how we put it to the test like this. This is how they quit. This is the quickest way to put it to the test. If you say you love the Lord, no problemos. We're gonna bring out the scriptures to you to rebuke you sharply. Are you gonna hold a grudge? What you gonna do? You cause you can't say I love the Lord, but I hate you niggas. You can't say that, man, because you love the Lord. Excuse my French, but yeah. Go ahead, man. He is a liar. He is a what? He is a liar. Exactly. You can't say you love the Lord, but you hate your brother. Go ahead. For he that loveth not his brother. For he that loveth not his brother. Come on. Whom he had seen. Whom he had what? Whom he had seen. You see your brother on a daily basis, man. You, see, you have never seen the Lord. None of us here have seen the Christ the Messiah. None of us here have seen the most High God of heaven. We have not seen them. But you see your brother every day. Go ahead. How can he love God whom he had not seen? That's it. How can you say you love the Lord but you've never seen the most high God of heaven and earth, not his son? Okay, come on. And this commandment have we from him mm. that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. That's it. That's it. You see how simple this is? It's that simple. So you can't say, no, me, I love God. Okay, no problem. Because remember, you don't, you, you're not, you don't see the most high, you don't talk to him, on, no. You talk to your brother on a day. If there's an issue, talk to your brother. 
If there's an issue, use the scriptures to correct the situation. But guess what? You hate your brother in your heart. You grudge him. You will hate the most high. Do you understand that? So you can't say you love the Lord, but you, ha you hate your brother. You can't apply, apply, you can't be civil with your brother. You can't apply the civil law. You can't apply the royal law with your brother. You hate the most high. It's very simple like that. Yeah, go back to living as 19. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Okay, come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. You see this? So when you, if you, don't, for you not to suffer sin upon your neighbor, you must rebuke your neighbor with the scriptures. You must correct them. But when you correct your brother and your brother hates you for being corrected, for correcting him, he hates the most high God of heaven. It's automatic. It's by he, basically he hates the most high God by default. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against the children of thy people, come on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You see, the Lord is telling you what you must do. Love the na your neighbor as yourself. You understand that? So you can't say, I love the Lord, but you're mistreating your brother. You're mistreating your sister. You're mistreating your wife. You see, because that's where we go. You're mistreating your husband. You're mistreating your children. What the hell is this? Hmm? Give me Ephesians 6 and 1. Talking about children. Let's bring it up. Ephesians 6 and 1. Yeah, read it. <coughs> the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Read. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Because this is righteous. Come on. Honor thy father and thy mother. This is now the fifth commandment. Go ahead. Which is the first commandment to promise. Promise of eternal life. You disrespect your parents. Because you disrespect your parents in the world, you think, ah, no, that's fine, because they are not in the truth. You're not going to get the kingdom. Because you know the truth. And then you come up in here, you disrespect your parents in the truth. You are not going to get the kingdom. Go ahead. Watch this. That, that, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. On mm. earth. Go ahead. And ye father. And ye what? And ye fathers, this is what I want to get to. Go ahead. Provoke not your children to wrath. You see what I was doing? <laughs> Me, I was not. I was not provoke, uh, provoking her to wrath. That's why I was dealing with her this way. Because if I don't, I'm provoking her to wrath. You know what the wrath is? It's not mine. The wrath of the Most High God of Heaven and Earth. Because that's what's going to happen. The wrath of the Most High God will spring upon him. Go ahead. But bring them up in the nature and ad admonition of the Lord. That's it. So this is how we bring up children. In the nature and admonition of the Lord. So guess what? The scriptures, that's how we're going to correct you. Yeah? Yes. Mm. <coughs> There's a different topic I want to deal with, not today. But it shall, it shall come to pass. <laughs> if it be the Lord's will. Now, go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Um, read verse 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your father and your mother. Go ahead. That, 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 that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see this? So another thing also is that when you see today parents are burying their children is because they don't honor their parents. According to the how things are supposed to be, 
Parents are the ones that are supposed to be bearing their children. No, no. Children are the ones that are supposed to bury their parents, not the other way around. But that's what's happening now. Okay, read that again, verse 12. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your father and your mother. Come on. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see, this right here is the reason. Because another thing also is that that's why to, another reason why you see children today, especially the youth, they have no jobs because they hate their parents. They don't obey their parents. They do not. That's why they are struggling. You see how struggling the youth is? I bet the youth is struggling, man. You know how many brothers and sisters, young men and young women, to their degrees, but they cannot get no job. Why? Because they, they don't honor their parents. <coughs> no, but I studied, I have a degree and whatnot. Yeah, but do you honor your parents? Yeah, honor my parents. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, you dishonor your parents. That's why you're not going to get no job. No, I have a degree, I have a master's in this and that. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, that's why you don't get no job. Because you don't honor your parents. You dishonor your parents. That's why the youth today, and the government will not be able, the government will not solve this problem. Because this is a spiritual problem. It's not a physical problem. Mm -mm. It's a spiritual one. But the results will show up in the physical. Those consequences is lack of jobs. Why do you think today young girls, they are falling pregnant by their numbers, man? How many abortions are being committed? How many young girls are having sex <coughs> at high school? Plenty, plenty, man. How many? How many of them are having sex in varsity? You know these fly-by-night colleges, Marikini, T-U-T-U-T, -T -U -T, and it's a fly-by-night. With the T-U-T, and it's still a fly-by-night. Because guess what? Out of there, they don't get no jobs. They are still in the cars, is washing cars. What are they doing? Because they dishonor their parents. That's the problem. You, you understand that, right? Here's another one. You ask yourself, hmm, why am I failing? I fail. I failed metric. I failed grade 11. I'm not passing mathematics. I'm not passing physical science. You know why? You don't honor your parents. Yes. That's why you are failing. That's why you are a failure. You are a loser. You know why? Because you don't honor your parents. You want to be a winner? Honor your parents. Read the Bible again. Now I'm dealing with the youngsters up in here. You will fail in God's call on. You don't honor your parents. That's why you are a loser. I'm going to tell you straight to you. You are a loser. Loser with triple O. Loser. If you want to be a winner, you will do what this Bible is saying and thou shalt have good success. Read the Bible for me. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh -huh. that, that, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Give me Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Because a lot of the youngsters, they do things because their parents don't see them. But the Lord does. Because again, your parent is not around. Your Ugos Kolo, your mama don't see you. Your mommy don't see you. You are alone. You So you think. The angel that the Lord has given you, whoop easy, she's right there. Because women, they've got women angels. They are the ones that are with you. They are the ones that are writing everything that you're doing. So when you think, no, my parents don't see me, my mother don't see me, but the angel is looking at you. So come exam time, you failing. How about I studied? No, you didn't. You, because again, you disrespect your parents. The Lord, you study. And tomorrow when it's time for exam, the Lord just make you forget. He just hit the delete button. Delete, delete, delete. You don't remember nothing. You're not going to remember nothing. Is the Lord doing it. Because you dishonor your parents. Read the Bible. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Listen good to this. This book of the law. This book of the law. Come on. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. Shall not depart out of your mouth. Come on. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. But you must meditate therein day and night. Come on. That thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But you must do according to all that is written therein. Go ahead. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And you know what? When it says thou shalt do according to all that is written therein, somebody must teach you. 
You're not going to be able to do according to all that's written in this book if nobody teaches you. You must be taught. You must gather together so you learn and learn how to be angels. Of course, you can't say, I'm just watching online and I will know how to act. You will never know how to do this. The law says you must come among us. When you're acting out, we're going to see you. But when you're out there, don't nobody see you. When you're out there in the world, the people in the world don't keep the commandments, so they cannot tell what's wrong with you. You understand that, right? Go ahead. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It shall not depart out of your mouth. Come on. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Read. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Read. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper. You're gonna, your way is going to gonna prosper. Things are going to go well with you. Whatever you touch will be good. Go ahead. And then... Thou shalt have good success. That's it. And you shall have good success. Because you may be thinking, our forefathers, they went to school also. The same way we went to school and whatnot, primary, right? they did the same thing. But you know why they were passing these subjects? Give me Daniel 1. Because there's all these examples in this book. Man. Give me the book of Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Um, read verse 4. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Uh -huh. Children in whom was no blemish. It says, children in whom was no blemish. They were, that means they were black and beautiful. This is then the man. Go ahead. But well favored. But they were well favored. Come on. And skillful in all wisdom. Stop right here. And what now? And skillful in all wisdom. You know what this means? This is the first thing to obtain. Wisdom. They were skillful in all wisdom. That means they were applying the laws of God. They had experience in applying the laws of God. Go ahead. And cunning in knowledge. And they were cunning in knowledge. Come on. And understanding science. Stop right there. And doing what? And understanding science. That's it. You see where the understanding of science came from? Be because they understood the laws of God and they were applying them. That's why now in school they were excelling. The reason why you are failing in school is because you are failing in the application of God's laws. So the Moses is not going to make you successful. You will be a failure. You will be a loser. Agree you on the truth. You say that you shall know the truth. This truth right here is going to make you feel you will pass. The reason why you keep failing is because you, are not, you don't want to hear the laws of God. So therefore your spirit will not strengthen your memory. That's why you forget. And when you study, you study by memorization. You just memorize. You don't understand nothing. That's what they say. You cram work. Because if you study tonight, right, you cram, 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 cram. And then after you're done, I see you, I chase you. Two minutes later, you've forgotten everything you learned. Because you cram work. You're not understanding. You have zero understanding. Because why? The spirit of the Lord is not there. So you're not going to understand nothing, man. You're going to fail. You are going to fail. And if you pass, but you're not keeping God's commandment, you know what's going to happen? Guess what? Whatever you're going to get, it will be to your destruction. You see how many of our people that are doctors, nurses, engineers, just look at them. They smoke weed. They calabating around with women. Women are ruling over them. They are not, they, are, they, they don't have a sound mind. They are doctors and lawyers and engineers. But just look at their personal life and you tell me. They are baby daddies. They are baby mamas. They are twerk stars. You understand? Just look at Wupel Tusi. Look at them. You, that's an example. Simple example in the world because that's what we, that's the people. Look at Butine Warana. Look at them. Dysfunctional. She cannot keep a man. You understand? Look at that. They look at who? What do you want? Dysfunctional relationships, man. So, because you may think, oh no, but uh, me, I'm good with men. Okay. Get You get a job, man. Okay, let's see what you're going to do for your nation. Zero. Nothing. You'll be a drunk. 
You will be a hoe. You will be a homemaker. That's what be, will become of you. You will not do nothing constructive or productive because that's not success. Success in the sight of the Most High God, first and foremost, is the keeping of His commandments. You keep His commandments, the Lord will start to improve you and increase you and multiply you. That's what the Lord is saying. Read the Bible again. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish, Go ahead. but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. And skillful in all wisdom. Come on. And cunning in knowledge. And cunning in knowledge. Read. And understanding science. And understanding science. Mathematical science. Physical science. Because mm. these are hard sciences. These are hard subjects. But in order for you to, that's why the government was even trying to help and say, you're going to do meth literacy. They're still failing at that too. You know why? Because the spirit of the Lord is not there. So our forefather Daniel, he understood science. You understand? Not only science, keep reading. He's going to tell you that. And all such as an ability in them to stand in the king's palace. You see, the forefather Daniel was so wise that even the king of Babylon trusted him with his affairs of the kingdom. The same way with our forefather Joseph. You know, Egypt was in a mess. But because our forefathers were going to benefit from Joseph being there, the Lord used our forefather Joseph to what? To, to advise Pharaoh on what to do. The famine, the seven years of famine and seven years of plenty and then the famine following after. Who was responsible for explaining and teaching Pharaoh what needs to be done in order to preserve his kingdom for our sakes? Joseph. You see that? Not only was Joseph what was wise, but he was wise enough to even stand before kings and tell them what to do. Because these are Hamites, they just dumb as hell. Go ahead. And whom they might teach the learning and the charm of the Chaldeans. They spoke the languages of the Chaldeans too. They also understand other languages. They could speak other languages. And these are the examples that you must follow. So don't think, well, these things are not in the Bible. They are in the Bible, of course. So, but the first, now, the number one skill that you must possess is the application of God's laws. When you do that, the Lord says, you're going to be good. The Lord will bless you for you to understand mathematics. But if you don't, the most are not going to bless you. You will fail even, you will even, you will even fail to get 30%. Because the government says, pass my gig 30%. Mm -hmm. They're going to drop it some more. They're going to be saying 20 now. <laughs> That's what's coming next. It will be zero in a few years to come. I'm telling you, man. Just buzz push and you're caught. You understand? You're just going to be pushed. So if you want to excel in your academia, you must excel in the laws of God, first and foremost. If you don't, guess what? You're going to be a loser. I'm saying it this way so that it, you see it must struggle lots of you see. You must remember it. Wherever you are walking, you must, yo, yo, I can look. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you must say it. You understand? You must remember it. You must understand this thing, man. Okay. No praise to the most high. No praise. Actually, you know what, man? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay on that just for a second. Yeah. Give me Exodus 25, read verse 23. Now, this is Moses giving out the instruction, the Most High giving the Lord, I mean, the Most High giving Moses the instructions on how to build the table of shoe bread. Now, I want you to listen to this, man. Exodus 25 is 23. Read that. Book of Exodus chapter 25 is 23. Listen good to this. Thou shalt also make a table of shitting wood. You shall make a table of shitting wood. Go ahead. Two cubits shall be the length thereof. Stop right there. It says two cubits shall be the length thereof. In order for this to happen, our forefathers understood what? Trigonometry and geometry. They understood all that. You can't do this without that. They knew maths. That's why they are doing this. And it came out exact. There was no, no, the measurement was less on the, mm -mm, you're not going to read that. Exactly. Okay, come on. Two cubits shall be the length thereof. Two cubits shall be the length thereof. And a cubit, the breadth thereof. Mm -hmm. And a cubit, 
and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Exactly. What is this? This is mathematics we're going over here. Go ahead. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold mm. and make that to a crown of gold round about. But, but remember also, not only that, but these are instructions, these are blueprints. Do it this way, that way, cut this one on the left, cut. You must have, you, in order for you to comprehend these guidelines, you must have the, the wisdom of the Lord to understand, to reproduce what you've been given. Elishiba, have a seat, sit down. I don't want you to see you moving around here. Go ahead. And thou shalt make unto it a border of, and thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand, of, of an, an hand, hand bread. Go ahead. And thou shalt make up. And they shall make unto it a border of a head bread round about. Right. And thou shalt make a gold crown to the border thereof round about. Right. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold. Mm -hmm. And put the rings in the four corners that are on the four that are on the four feet thereof. So guess what? This thing must be drawn first, then. You must draw it so you can understand what this thing is supposed to look like and get the measurements exactly. Exactly. You understand? So guess what? This is the knowledge of science. Understanding science. Okay, come on. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. Read. And thou shalt make the staves of shitty wood mm. and overlay them with gold that the table may be born with them. Go ahead. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof and the spoons thereof and, cover, and covers thereof and bowls thereof. Because in order for you to make spoons and dishes, you must understand trigonometry because every shape comes from a circle. Yeah? Every shape is drawn from a circle. So in order for you to draw a triangle properly, you draw it from a circle nicely. And when you draw that triangle inside a circle, guess what you do? You have you, you hold a diameter of the circle. The circle is cut in half. You understand? And then when the, when, the, when the circle touches the edge of the triangle, guess what? They call it Tancot theorem. Tancot. Mm. You see that? You see, I know what I'm talking about. I don't remember. <laughs> but I get Tancot theorem. Yeah. Yeah. The tangent and the cord of the whatever. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof and the spoons thereof, Go ahead. and the covers thereof, mm. and the bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold. Of what thou, now? Of pure gold mm. shall thou make them. So you see, I'm just giving you a simple example. You see Moses, what he understood? Moses was a mathematician, man. He understood what the Lord was giving unto him. Moses had the spirit of the Lord to understand. You understand that, right? He understood all that. Because his spirit strengthened his memory. So he was able to recall all of these things. Do you, can you imagine the level of the, 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 the spirit that, the, that Moses had in order for him to remember all these things that the Lord was telling him to write? Do you understand that? I mean, we can, you listen, man. You can't remember everything in the but Moses had, he remembered everything that was written about him. So the reason why you struggling God meant literacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't keep the commandments. If you want to excel in your studies here at school, you better follow this Bible. I want to see you here every Sabbath. You're going to be here every Sabbath day. You understand? If you don't, you're going to fail. What grade are you in now? You're going to fail it if you don't come in. When you doing computer something, right? You're going to fail if you don't apply. I'm just letting you know now. You don't co obey what this, because during the week, we don't, there's no boy that you're going to be practicing on. There's no boy that knows you. No. And when you go to school, what you wear? Pants? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sister says, Abigail, you better fix this. There's no wearing of pants. You must tell the teachers, this one don't wear no pants, this one. Otherwise, you're going to fail. I'm just telling you now. You're going to be stuck with great time. You know that thing? You know, you ever seen those people every, every year? 
there's just new people, they find you in the same grade. Bow jump. Hmm? You understand? People are going to grade 11, grade 12. When are you still stuck in grade 10? You're not moving. Mm -mm. It's because you are not in this. And in order for you to be in this, you must honor your father and your mother. That's what you must do. Otherwise, you're not going to go nowhere. Understand that? Make sense? Oh, please. Oh, please to the most high. Yeah, because the youngsters, man, they are struggling. Okay. The government is really trying to help them to succeed and whatnot. Because, you know, one thing is true. That one thing I can tell you. Um, you youngsters that are up in here, whatever you are going to study is got nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with how your nation is going to benefit. <coughs> Whatever you're studying is nothing is zero, basically zero associations. You have no association with what you're studying. Because the most important reason why you are studying that, whatever you're studying, is for your nation to benefit. That's it. I hope you understand that. Because mm -hmm. we need doctors' opinion. We need doctors. We need doctors in Israel. We need GPs. We need GPs, of course. We need pediatricians. The, ch the doctors that deal with children and whatnot and all that. But again, obstetricians. We need those two. We need obst obst obstetrics. That's what they call it, right? Obstetrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want that one? We need that. We need gynees up in here. You understand? We need that. We need dentists up in here. So, but you see those three. Gynae, pediatrician, GP. Very important, these three. Very, very important. We need them things. So, so don't be playing games and thinking about what you are studying. is mm -mm, for your nation. Or else, you're going to study and become a doctor and don't have a job. Mm -hmm. You ever seen an, an unemployed doctor? How many that's hair of me? But it's happening in Mzanzi. Doctors that are unemployed, they even took to the streets because they couldn't get no job. Now they are just useless now. Mm. But if they come in Israel, guess what? Out of the most, I will find them jobs. They will find jobs. You understand? They will. Yeah, because they can't, the time coming where this congregation is going to build a hospital. We got in there, don't worry, we, we got in there. Yes. Some of you don't know what's going on. Don't know, he's just sleeping up in here. You understand? The Mosa is moving some things in the background. <laughs> okay, okay, all praises to the Mosa. Go back to Exodus, man. Let's go there. Exodus 20. Yeah, Exodus 20, read verse 18. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. So murder. That pertains to your neighbor because you can't kill them outside. Your neighbor. This goes for your neighbor. Murder. Abortion. It falls under that too. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Is this a big one? It means this is a big one, this one. You understand? Um, read that verse again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 14 mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery Thou shalt not commit adultery This goes into watching porn Watching twerk videos online You understand? All of that falls under this Okay, go ahead Thou shalt not steal Don't be stealing, don't be a thief You understand? Because children be stealing their mother's phones You know? Yeah. They be stealing their mother's phones and tablets They be making calls privately Yes, you are a thief. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Oh, this again. is a big one. You know, children lying to their parents. Ah, uh, that's a big one. A big one. Because I know he has lied to his parents. You've done it too. There are many lies she be told. That's why you are failing. Mm -hmm. That's why he failed too. It's because you don't honor your parents. The reason why I'm talking like this 
is because I want you to remember these things so that when you read the scriptures, you can actually connect and say, the reason why I'm not progressing is because I lie to my parents. I deceive my parents. When they ask me something of that I did, I did some evil. When they ask me, I just lie. You're not going to be successful. Read the Bible again. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 16. Read. So you didn't fail. You're not a failure. No, no, you are a loser. Loser. <laughs> I'm going to say it that way so you remember. Why? Because you must be a winner. From this day forth, you must be winners. A winner, a deep, you have a different mindset. A winner is a deep. Losers, they always complain. Babe. Losers, they lie. They deceive. They always make excuses. Winners don't say that. Winners, they'll take responsibility and say, yeah, you know, I like to my parents. You know? Yes, you know, there's a boy I like. Mm-hmm. Because we, 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 we were your age. What you don't lie to us? You see another lie. We were your age, man. We've been there. But now that we're here, we're going to tell you, don't do it. Because we know the consequences of it. Because the consequences of it, some things you will not be able to reverse. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 16. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Because what it was it? Who was it you? You were telling me one of these brothers that was with us, the smoker, the weak smoker that was with us, now he's, he's opened the church of Thyatira. <laughs> he has opened the church of Thyatira with women surrounding him wearing pants. And he's putting it out there for the world to see. Man, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this up. Mm -hmm. You see what happens to the people that live about here? They literally go nuts. Now he's a nut job now. You leave this truth, you can't. This is not the Christian church. You're going to lose your mind. Tell me. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Don't, don't covet your neighbor's house. Go ahead. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Go ahead. Nor his man servant. Nor his man servant. Come on. Nor his maid servant. Nor his maid servant. Nor his ox. Mm. Nor his ass. Mm. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. You see this thing? So this is the last commandment. This is the tenth commandment. This pertains to your neighbor. You understand? So 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 I mean we've been going it's like not four and a half hours or something. So, so I'm going to end the class right here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to end the class. I'm going to end the class. We're going to break bread. Okay? We're going to break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the one thing that I want you to understand, men and women, give me 2 Ezra 14, 34. 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 34. Watch this. 2 Ezra 14, 34. This is what you must take away. The second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. If so be that you will subdue your own understanding. The reason why you find yourself in the mess that you are in is because you trust yourself too much. The worst thing that you can do in this truth is have some ideas. Don't be having ideas about this Bible, man. Just do exactly as it says. Don't come up with new ideas. Mm -mm. We don't want to hear your ideas. We want to hear that said the Lord. That's it. Go ahead. Therefore, if so be, then you will subdue your own understanding. Let go of whatever cleverness they did you think you have, you must let it go. We don't want clever people are being here. We want wise men and women. Okay, go ahead. And reform your heart. And change the way you think. Go ahead. Ye shall be kept alive. You see what the Lord is saying? You're going to be kept alive. The Lord says you're going to live. you live forever. Go ahead. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. That's not some heavy stuff. And the Lord says, after death, you will receive mercy. After death. Mm. Beautiful stuff right there. But the key is, the Lord says, subdue your own understanding. The problem is that what I've seen in this truth is that I see young men coming in, I see older men coming in. I see young women coming in, I see older women coming in. The problem is one, you think you know too much. The reason why you find yourself in the messes you are in, troubles in your life, you don't, nothing seems to work in your life, is because you trust yourself too much, because you think you are too clever for the most high. And that's always been the common sickness that I've been seeing 
When men and women walking in and out of this congregation, they think they know better than this what this what the most I got to say. They think they know better. And that's the reason why you find yourself nothing is working in your life. You can't succeed, you're not prosper, nothing going on. There's always confusion in your life. There's always a mess. Your life is a mess. You know why? Because you know, you think you know better than this Bible. I've seen brothers that, give me that in Hebrews. No, 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 Galatians. Listen, man, I've seen brothers that came into the congregation. They thought there was something. <coughs> you understand? Galatians 2. Read the seven. No, 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 no. Hold on. Yeah. Galatians 2. Read verse 5. Book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 5. To whom? You know what? Start at verse 4. Yes, sir. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. And that because of false brethren. And I was broke in. Because that's the, that was the issue. The main issue was that there were false brethren that came in unawares. Go ahead. Who came in privately. They came in privately. Privately. Go ahead. To spy out our liberty. They came in privately to spy out our liberty. You know when he said privately? It doesn't mean we didn't see them. No, we saw them. But they were in, their intentions was not like what the Bible is saying. They were not here with us. They had other agendas. Go ahead. To spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. that they might bring us into bondage. That they might bring us into bondage, into sin. Go ahead. To whom we gave place by subjection. Mm -hmm. No, not for an hour. That's why we did not even debate with them when they were popping off like popcorns up in here. We didn't. We didn't give a time for them. Go ahead. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. That's why it's still continuing. It didn't stop. We're still going, man. Go ahead. But of these who seemed to be someone. This is the problem right here. But of these, the same false brethren that came in unawares, they came in, they seemed to be somewhat. Because in the world, there was something they thought. You understand? There was something in the world. So now when they come into the congregation, go ahead. Whatsoever they were, whatsoever they were in the world, they come into the congregation. They wanna use whatsoever they were in the world. They wanna use it in the congregation. Go ahead. It maketh no matter to me. It maketh no matter to me. The apostle Paul said, "I didn't give a damn about what you was in the world, because you might find already. That's why you find already. A brother comes in, he's a doctor. He don't keep no commandments, but when he's up in here." He wants to make it, he wants to be, he wants to get some respect. Because he's a doctor. We don't give a damn about that, man. The only reputation that you're going to get in here is by doing the work of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Then you're going to get, you're going to build up your name. But you're not going to come with, no, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a this, and y'all got to listen to me. Mm -mm, that's not going to happen. You must labor in this truth. Put your life on the line. Then we're going to recognize you. Like the government says. Then you'll be recognized. Go ahead. God accepted no man's person. He says God accepted no man's person. The most I don't give a damn about that. Read on. For they who seem to be somewhat. For they who seem to be somewhat. Come on. In conference. In conference when it comes to this. Go yeah. ahead. Added nothing to me because they bring in nothing, they adding nothing to us. You know why? Because when they were in here, they wanted to they wanted to be respected because of what they are in the world. And when they didn't receive that, they started to be offended, they started to want to get mad, and slowly, slowly they left us. So they realize, or you know, we cannot use that here. In, here in, the, in this congregation, this doesn't work because it doesn't. And it will not because the Bible says so. You see, the Apostle Paul had to deal with niggers like this. He did. He had to deal with niggers like this. So when you come up in here, you start it from zero. As a, you start as a baby. We don't care if you are a politician. You're going to start right there at the floor. And you're going to build your name up in this truth 
applying the laws of God, being on one accord with your brothers and sisters in the laws of God. That's it. Because in the sight of the Most High God, that's how the Lord looks at it. Oh, praise to the Most High. Mm. Some shock therapy for you. You understand? So, okay, we're going to end the class right there. Oh, praise to the Most High God. Let's give the Lord a hand.